Chapter 76, Two People Connected Who? Vlad slowly let out a breath. He had a smile on his face. Although he recalled a bad past, he still smiled. That was because the man had said that it was better to smile when you were sad or confused than to cry. Although Vlad was not a person who would listen to everything, he was still good at taking good advice. How is it? The corners of Vlad's mouth curled up as he said, so, it should be happiness right? Happiness. Z whispered and felt a sense of comfort in his heart. Yes, although Lee's Efa is not good, but... Vlad was extremely certain of this place. But he must feel that his last life is a happy one. Vlad was extremely sure of this. There was no doubt about it. For that man, to be able to spend his last life with his beloved son, even if he died to protect his child, even if that was the case, that man would probably feel extremely happy, right? Vlad was very sure of this. I see. Z muttered to himself. The past that had gradually gone away began to emerge. The memories of that bastard began to gradually become clear. The memories that had been buried deep in his heart finally couldn't be resisted. The man called Ferdinand Snowden was an orphan. The first time Z saw him was at Marine Ford. He was very surprised. Why did this kid always have a bitter and deep hatred? He was just a ten-year-old kid, but he always had a murderous look. Later he found out that the kid's family was killed by the pirates. As the descendant of the martyrs, the kid named Vlad was incorporated into the orphanage of Marine Ford. He didn't communicate with others and always had a solitary appearance. The next time they met was several years later. After experiencing the ups and downs of life, Z who had lost his family began to become a marine instructor. He wanted to nurture a hero. Snowden was his second student. After many years, the kid had become a young man. But Z still recognized him from the crowd. His temperament had not changed at all. That year, Z was 43 years old and Snowden was 19 years old. The two men who had no family first met. Snowden always worked hard. No one knew why this guy could only sleep for four hours a day. The rest of the time, except for eating quickly, no one knew the reason. Except Z, he knew. Z was very clear that there was a lingering sadness in the man's heart. There was a strong hatred. Z could understand that he had similar thoughts when he faced the bodies of his family. Snowden was not a very outstanding recruit. He was not comparable to the two monsters of last year. He was also very clear about this, but his training still did not stop, even more strict. Finally, one day, Z punched him hard. The reason was that the man spat out a mouthful of blood in the middle of training. Z clearly remembered that when he severely criticized the man, the man said, I can't help it. Teacher Z, besides risking my life, what else can I do? At that time, the man showed an expression in front of Z for the first time. He was very confused and had no hope in his life. What else can I do except to train hard to find pirates to take revenge? The man said. Z felt cold in his heart. He knew that this kid recognized the truth. He really thought that his life was only left with the path of revenge. So Z gave the boy a hard punch and sent him flying. For such a bastard kid, fists are often more effective than words. So some of the students were shocked. Snowden, who was not too outstanding, became an assistant of Teacher Z. This was not envy. The temper of soldiers was generally not good. Z was also the same. Snowden was often beaten by Z because of a small matter. Z was not good at expressing his feelings. He just wanted to let this bastard know that the so-called fetters cannot be formed after losing. The so-called relatives cannot be increased after losing. Perhaps this was what Z wanted to tell him. Time gradually passed. As the training time was running out, the two gradually became familiar. Although Snowden still had a cold face, even when he was beaten up, he gritted his teeth and refused to bow his head. Finally, it was the day before Snowden graduated. Bang! Ha ha ha! Boy, you are still too tender! Z punched Snowden to the ground. Looking at the young man with a bloody nose and a swollen face on the ground, he felt a little emotional. Teacher Z, if there is nothing else, I will go first. Snowden silently got up, bowed to Z and turned to leave. Boy, you are going to graduate tomorrow. Z sat cross-legged on the ground and suddenly said, Is there anything you want to say to me? Snowden's slowly leaving figure suddenly stopped. After a long time, he finally squeezed out a sentence, Teacher Z, take care of yourself. Remember, Snowden. Z's voice was low. Remember, 
Don't die. Snowden looked back in confusion. Don't die. Z said. You have to remember that if you die, there will be people who will be sad for you. Z's tone was very calm, but his eyes were very sincere. Who? 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 These two ordinary words made Snowden's breathing quicken. His expression was no longer the poker face from before. The man was a little confused and asked, What? Teacher Z? What are you talking about? I mean, be careful, Snowden, your family is still worried about you behind your back. Z said. Family? Where did my family come from? Snowden's tone was very light. Idiot. A powerful punch landed on Snowden's face, directly blasting Snowden out of the dojo and heavily falling on the road. Just as Snowden was confused, Z's low voice came from inside, Boy, am I not considered your family? His gentle words were like a sharp arrow, directly piercing Snowden's heart. Unable to control it, completely unable to control it. For some reason, the tears completely lost control and fell like rain. What is going on? Snowden was extremely confused. Why am I crying? Bastard. A somewhat old man walked out. The corners of his eyes were somewhat sparkling, but the corners of his mouth were smiling. The so-called man is laughing when he wants to cry. Z slowly opened his eyes. The vicissitudes of life flashed in his eyes. Is that so? Z looked at Vlad who was facing him and smiled. Looks like that bastard has become a qualified father. No doubt. Vlad shrugged. Bang. In the next moment, the two disappeared at the same time. Then there was a fierce punch. Vlad transformed into a dragon. His right fist wrapped in thick dragon scales and Busos Hoku smashed into Z's mechanical arm. But kid, this is not the reason why I turn a blind eye to you. Same. Old man, this is not the reason why I don't beat you. The two people connected by the same person finally began to fight. Chapter 77, King vs King General vs General Vlad had a smile on his face, the wings on his back flapped slightly and he flew into the sky, just in time to avoid Z's heavy blow. Crash! The thick deck of the warship instantly shattered and a huge hole suddenly appeared. The huge warship couldn't help but tremble under the terrifying power. What a difficult kid! Z cursed in his heart. The kid in front of him wasn't just an outstanding Busos Hoku Haki. Seeing that the Kanbunshoku Haki was also strong, it was difficult to see his movements. But Z wasn't weak either. On the contrary, his body wasn't as weak as Z after four years. His strength was extremely terrifying. Swoosh! Z turned around and forcibly twisted the huge mechanical arm that had broken the deck. If this attack hit, the entire ship would break instantly. Z twisted his body and removed the power from the mechanical arm. Then he jumped and directly rushed toward Vlad in the sky. Wahahahaha! Come on, Mr. Z! Vlad laughed without any fear. He flapped his wings and rushed toward Z like a shooting star. Kid, don't be too arrogant. Z twisted his body again, his heavy mechanical arm spun around his body and smashed directly at Vlad with a terrifying force. Wahaha! Vlad smiled. His keen perception had locked onto Z's movements, and he also punched out. Boom! The sky suddenly exploded and a storm swept across the sea. The two people on the warship felt like they couldn't stand. After all, they were still too young. That's amazing, Mr. Z. Vlad was directly sent flying by Z's punch. That kind of terrifying power was not a joke. Even after transforming into a half-dragon, he found it difficult to resist. This was the first time that he was at a disadvantage in terms of strength after obtaining the ability. It should be said that he was worthy of being a monster who was qualified to be a general with just physical skills. It was terrifying. Who? Vlad moved his right hand and the dragon scales on his fist were slightly broken. What was stronger was his hacky. Z's hacky had reached a terrifying level. There were only a few people in the sea who could be compared to him. With Vlad's hacky and the sturdiness of the dragon scales, he was hit so hard that his dragon scales were almost broken. What kind of terrifying power was this? This kind of hacky level was really amazing. After more than four years, Monkey D. Luffy could actually defeat Z without using the fourth gear? Vlad only wanted to say one thing. What a joke. The movie version was really nonsense. Vlad asserted that with Z's current level, even if Luffy opened the fourth gear, he would only end up as a fool. How powerful. Vlad grinned his eyes devoid of any fear. 
but only such an opponent is interesting. Wah ha 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 ha. Mr. Z, do it again. Vlad flapped his wings and his tall body shot out again. In an instant, he was already close to Z. Arrogant kid. Z didn't show any weakness. One of the six forms of moon step in his hand gave him a kind of light feeling. His legs felt like he was stepping on a solid ground, allowing him to easily be in the air. Kid, let me teach you how to be humble. Z used his legs as if he was equipped with a propeller. His heavy body used a speed that didn't match at all. His huge mechanical arm tore through the air and smashed at Vlad. Ha ha. I can see it, Mr. Z. Vlad laughed out loud. With a flap of his wings, the body that was rushing forward suddenly stopped. In a split second, it passed Z's mechanical arm. The powerful mechanical arm brought a violent wind and blew Vlad's short hair close to his scalp. Ha 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 ha. Mr. Z. Take this. Vlad flapped his wings again like a red lightning. In an instant, he was already close to Z and his right arm was ready to attack. Crack. The air was overwhelmed. Vlad's iron fist showed no mercy just because Z was an old man. For such a strong opponent, showing mercy was no different than courting death. Vlad was going all out in every move. Fighting to the death was equivalent to thinking that he had lived too long. Too tender. Bang. Just as Vlad's fist was about to hit Z's stomach, Z's empty left hand finally came in handy. A powerful Busos Hoku instantly covered him. His muscles bulged and his sharp vision instantly locked onto Vlad's attack trajectory. Then he heavily punched out. Too tender. Boy. Z's blue veins bulged on his forehead and he roared. The two fists collided again, it was like thunder. The violent momentum even affected the flow of the clouds in the sky. That is not necessarily the case. Puchi. Vlad suddenly turned around. The long and strong tail covered with black busos hoku haki behind him was like a huge steel whip tearing through the air. It made a dull sound and hit Z on the shoulder. Whoosh. Plop. Z was like a bat hit by a bat, he was instantly sent flying by Vlad and fell into the sea. Who? Who? That's amazing. Vlad gasped a little. What a terrible guy. The short confrontation made him tense up every minute and every second. If he relaxed, he would be directly killed. It was really. This feeling was really irresistible. Vlad had a wild smile on his face. Teacher Z. Seeing their most respected teacher being thrown into the sea, the two people on the ship were anxious. Damn it, retreat. The woman named Anne had two balls of red light in her hands. She looked at the man named Vlad in the sky with cold eyes. She had the ability of a backward fruit user. Her ability was extremely terrifying. The age of the things that are touched will fall back by 12 years. The age of the people who have been touched will also fall back 12 years. Many times, it may disappear. This ability is also effective for things other than creatures. It is to fall back to the state of 12 years ago. Removing the regression state can only defeat the ability. Without a doubt, the ability of a bug level fruit but the person herself is not strong. Bang. Anne took a step back. There was a hole with a faint smoke on the deck under her feet. Anne turned her head and saw a woman's figure in her sight. The woman in a red maid outfit had a cigarette in her mouth, and her eyes were very arrogant. Hey, woman, it's best not to disturb my captain's good mood. If you want to fight, then I will play with you. The person who came was Baby Five. Anne. Seeing that his partner had encountered an enemy ninja, the man named Bins wanted to go up and help. Hey! Suddenly, his foot slipped, and Bins jumped up high. With a backflip, he fell onto the side of the ship. His eyes were full of fear as he looked at the man who suddenly appeared. I'm sorry. The chef held two kitchen knives in his hands. The turbid liquid dripped from his hands. He smiled and looked very polite. If you want to go over, you have to knock me down. Little brat. With such a loud shout, a water column instantly rose from the sea. A shell broke through the sea and shot directly at Vlad. Soon after, Z's majestic and unscathed body broke out of the water and stepped on the air toward Vlad. Come on, Mr. Z. Let me have a good look at your strength. Vlad casually flapped his wings and easily sent the shell flying. He laughed and looked at Z who was getting closer and closer. King against king. General against general. The Fierce Battle Has Just Begun Chapter 78, Fierce Battle Little Brat Z was excited in his heart. 
This little brat was very strong. He was really very strong. His appearance was completely different from his age. His strength was not limited by his age. This little devil was very strong. Whether it was hacky or physique, they were perfect without any shortcomings. Although it seemed that he had a very strong devil fruit, but he didn't rely on the power of the devil fruit. His own body was the thing that the little devil relied on the most. Although the other side was a pirate, Z still praised this point. For an expert like Z, his own strength was the real strength. Roger, Rayleigh, Z, these experts of the last generation were all pure physical skills. For these legends on the sea, as a man who always galloped on the sea, it was really unbearable for these people to not be able to swim. What's more, with their strength, they don't need the devil fruit to increase their strength. In fact, with the strength of these people, unless they give them a devil fruit of the same level as the shock fruit, their strength will not improve too much. After all, humans still have their limits. Vlad didn't know what Z was thinking. If he knew, he would probably laugh with disdain. For Vlad, no matter how the form of strength was, it was just strength. If he could use his own strength, then there would be no problem. Whether it was the devil fruit, physical skills, hacky skills, or other things, it didn't matter. If he could become stronger and compete with other heroes, then it didn't matter. Ha 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 ha. So strong, so strong. Mr. Z. The two men fought fiercely in the sky. Vlad, who could fly, was like a strong bird. Air combat was his home field. He was unrestrained. Z also didn't lose his momentum. He used moonwalk in his hand and it felt like he had returned to his original state. It was not like he was stepping on the air but he was running on the solid ground. Brat. Z's huge mechanical arm swept directly toward Vlad's head. Although the other party was the son of his beloved disciple, pirates were pirates and enemies were enemies. As a soldier, there was no need to hold back. What's more, Z was very clear that this guy in front of him was not a man who needed him to hold back. His strength was extremely strong. After all, he was already 70 years old. His originally strong body had a broken arm and was suffering from asthma. He was afraid that he had no chance to hold back against this man. Wooha! Vlad suddenly lowered his head and directly let go of Z's huge mechanical arm. Dragon Tail Whip. The thick right leg was instantly wrapped with solid Busos Hoku Haki. It tore through the air and swept towards Z's neck. The wind made Z's soft hair tremble, but Z didn't hesitate at all. His sight and smell were also terrible, even more than Vlad. He clearly saw Vlad's attack. Humph. Z coldly snorted and raised his left leg. His hardened calf directly blocked Vlad's whip leg. Bang! High in the sky, a strong wind blew. The confrontation between the two men was already shocking. The two people separated when they touched. Vlad and the huge power contained in them instantly separated the two people. Whether it was Vlad or Z, both of them could not help but retreat. After all, they were not monsters like Kaido. Their body size and strength were far beyond ordinary people. Ha 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 ha! How satisfying! Vlad was like a madman, he shouted crazily, he had no intention of stabilizing his body. The huge wings on his back flapped and directly changed the momentum and rushed toward Z. Crazy kid! Z's face was calm as he calmly spat out a few words. His right leg stepped in the air at a speed that ordinary people couldn't see. It was as if he stepped on the ground. A ripple spread in the air and Z's heavy body shot out at lightning speed. He also rushed toward Vlad. Wah ha 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 ha. Mr. Z. The muscles on Vlad's right arm were bulging. The entire right arm looked thicker. Even though it was covered with thick scales, it was easy to see the blue veins on his arm bulging. It looked like small snakes, extremely horrifying. Z didn't say a word, but his eyes looked very serious, and the heavy mechanical arm seemed to be light in his hand, and he swung back at Vlad viciously. Bang. Crack. Crack. Vlad's fist directly hit Z's huge mechanical fist. Even the hard mechanical arm made of sea stone cracked. It can be seen how terrifying Vlad's attack was. Kid, you have some brute force. Z said in a mocking tone. You flatter me. Vlad showed eight white teeth and looked very polite. Haha. <laughs> Z's eyes narrowed but there was a smile on his lips. Vlad instinctively felt that something was wrong. Crush. Z shouted. Light. A strong light appeared. Boom. A huge explosion resounded through the sky. Damn it. 
Vlad only had time to curse before he was engulfed by the intense explosion. On the ship below, the confrontation between the two groups of people continued. Ah! What a troublesome ability! Baby Five lightly jumped and dodged a ball of red light. He said somewhat angrily. The ability of this woman in front of him was indeed as difficult to deal with as the bastard captain had said. The thing that was hit by the red light, regardless of the material, whether it was alive or not, would be forced to retreat for twelve years. It was really too much of a bug. If it was an old man facing this woman, it would be fine. After retreating for twelve years, his strength would greatly increase. However, Miss Maid was in her prime, twenty years old. If she took one hit, wouldn't she be finished? Who Baby Five slowly spat out a puff of smoke. Her expression was very unfriendly. Since she can't be hit, then she can't do anything. The maid lightly jumped and dodged another ball of light. The red ball of light directly hit the deck. The solid deck was instantly covered with tree bark. It was a terrifying ability. Ten finger piercing bullet. The female servant stretched out her hands in mid-air. Her ten slender fingers were already aimed at Anne, who was on the other side. Now, dance, idiot. The female servant's fingers instantly turned into ten barrels. There was no need to prepare at all. She spat out flames, and the ten barrels were like ten guns that did not need to be loaded. They continuously fired bullets. What? Now, it was Anne's turn to be confused. She really did not expect her opponent to have such outstanding fruit ability. Damn it. Anne turned over and barely managed to dodge the shot, but in just an instant, there were several more holes under her feet. Hey, hey, woman, don't stop. Baby 5's tone was very disdainful. Dance properly. Bang. 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 This was the suppression of firepower. Chapter 79, Platinum Fire Do you still have the extra strength to look around? The chef sounded very angry. He held two kitchen knives in his hands and his elbows went down. The viscous liquid continued to seep down and dripped onto the ground from time to time. In the words of the chef, although it was his own ability, it still felt a little disgusting. Hoo hoo! Damn it! The man in ninja attire gasped and looked at the man in front of him with fear. He was very strong really a very strong enemy. The ability of the physical body and the hacky were all first class. Such a guy actually came out of the first half of the Grand Line. Binz was very surprised, but thinking about the man in the sky who was fighting with Teacher Z, it seemed that there was nothing amazing. Binz tightly held the knife in his hand and stared at the other person. He was not familiar with the Kanbunshoku hacky. It was difficult to catch the other person's movements. Clumping. Clumping. Binz shouted and jumped up. The moment he jumped up, a strange thing happened. A green vine instantly grew on the deck. It was like a pea vine in fairy tales. It grew long when it saw the wind. In just a blink of an eye, it had grown very thick. Binz landed on one of the vines. He was a fruit user and could control these plants. Under his control, these vines seemed to come to life. Rather than vines, it was more like tentacles that swept towards the chef. Binz himself gripped his knife tightly. The vines he was standing on were still behind the many vines. Sigh, the compatibility between us is very bad. The chef said. There was gradually a clear liquid on his hand that gradually became turbid. In the blink of an eye, it had already wrapped around his kitchen knife. Oil fountain. As the chef waved his hand, a large amount of turbid liquid sprayed out, giving off a pungent smell. Pfft. The liquid instantly hit the vines that were sweeping over giving the vines a big boost. It was washed clean and left nothing behind. Oh no. Binz instantly realized what the other party was using, but it was already too late. See, I told you that our compatibility is very bad. The chef crossed his two kitchen knives and gently rubbed them. A spark flew up, bringing with it a line of fire. Go. In the blink of an eye, flames soared into the sky. Who, who, who? Vlad gasped for breath. His expression was not very good. His right hand was bleeding, and he was wrapped in thick dragon scales. Even though he had been completely hardened by the Busos Hoku Haki, he was still unable to endure the previous explosion. How cunning! Vlad said. This is the wisdom of an elder. Kid. Z wouldn't give Vlad a chance to rest. The so-called battle was to seize the opportunity to defeat the opponent. Z was undoubtedly a qualified warrior. 
The huge mechanical arm tore through the sky, bringing with it a huge wave of wind as it smashed towards Vlad. Tisk! Drink! Vlad shouted loudly. He twisted his body, and his thick right leg lashed out at the huge mechanical arm. Bang! A huge force collided and Vlad was directly sent flying. Z's strength was really terrifying. Kid! Are you just like this? Before Vlad could adjust his body, Z's attack arrived and a huge mechanical claw directly grabbed at Vlad. Hey, old man! Don't be too arrogant! Vlad's tall figure disappeared. It was replaced by a huge fire dragon. Its fiery red scales reflected the sunlight and it looked very beautiful. Don't look down on people. The huge fire dragon roared and its left palm was like a small mountain. It was like slapping flies directly at Z. Is it really a legendary beast? Z only had this thought in his mind. Bang! Z was unable to resist the impact of the huge force and was directly sent flying by Vlad. Who? 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 The huge fire dragon only lasted for a moment before it disappeared. Vlad once again returned to his dragon form. He panted heavily and looked somewhat uncomfortable. Bang! 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 With this sound, Z who was sent flying once again stepped on Moonstep and appeared in front of Vlad. There was a very obvious wound on his head and blood kept flowing. Just now, Vlad's attack was not without effect. Why did you change back? Z was a little curious. After all, the power of Vlad Fire Dragon was too terrifying. I am not stupid. Such a big body. Vlad tilted his head. Isn't it a target? Ha 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 ha. Z narrowed his eyes, then how do you know that the current situation is not stupid? The figure disappeared in an instant and Z once again rushed over. Of course it is because I have something to rely on. Vlad clenched his fists. Flames gradually appeared on the scales that covered his fists. Gradually, they began to burn. The golden flames began to burn. This move is called. Vlad flapped his wings and instantly shot out. He charged towards Z without showing any weakness. Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. What? Z was a bit surprised. Flames? The one that wrapped around the kid's hand was indeed a flame. Sure enough, it was like Sengoku. It really had its own unique ability. Bang! The white gold flame soared into the sky and the two figures retreated. What? Z was stunned. There was a huge fist print on the sturdy mechanical arm and there were signs of melting around it. What a terrifying flame! Z thought that with such a high temperature, even if he had Busos Hoku, he wouldn't be able to withstand it. Flames? Z narrowed his eyes slightly. He had heard of the arson case of Mary Gioase. Vlad felt a little guilty. He didn't want to use flames at all. What a joke. Z was a real higher UPS in the Marine. He knew about the arson case of Mary Gioase. He must know that the suspect was still running away. Once his flames came out, he would definitely be suspected. But now he couldn't care so much. If he didn't use flames, then he wouldn't have to wait for the future. He would be directly killed by Z. It was better to fight. Vlad comforted himself. Compared to Mary Gioase, the flame had already begun to evolve. Although it was not complete, although it was just a small step, but at least the color was different. Yes, after the battle with the shadow, it was not only Vlad's Kanbuncho Kohaki that improved. His fruit ability also improved. From the moment he got the fruit, the flame that had never become stronger finally began to evolve. The most intuitive change was the color and temperature. The color changed to white gold and the temperature increased by at least 50%. It was really terrifying data. But because the evolution was not complete, the platinum flame was not something that Vlad could use as he pleased. The flame that was formed from the golden flame was far more physically consuming than the golden flame. The same amount of flame, Vlad had to consume about three times more physical strength. This showed how terrifying the flame was. There was no other way. Vlad could only take a gamble. He bet that Z wouldn't recognize his flame. After all, if he could control the flame, then his flame was completely different from the flame that Mary Gioase displayed. Or bet that he could defeat Z and win everything. Now he could only take a gamble. He would bet on defeating Z before his physical strength was exhausted. Otherwise, no matter whether he would be exposed or not, the only thing waiting for him was the impel down. When Vlad thought of this, his eyes gradually became fanatical. Then let's give it a try. I won't fall here. 
Chapter 80, Meteor Spear Mr. Z. The wings on Vlad's back flapped heavily. His face was filled with fearless and wild laughter. In an instant, a strong storm swept up and everything around him was swept away. Then he disappeared. Take this. Vlad waved his fist and crazily punched. His huge fist mercilessly swung towards the enemy in front of him. He did not hold back, nor did he hesitate. The fist that was wrapped in platinum flame was much stronger than before. The embarrassing situation of not having a direct confrontation with Z before finally disappeared after using the flame. Kid. Z waved his huge mechanical arm and roared, don't be too arrogant. Bang. 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 The two men were fighting, blocking everything. They were fighting fiercely in the sky with their lives on the line. There was no extra thought and no spare time to think about how to fight. There were only attacks, constantly punching and attacking. No matter how much he said, it was useless. Only in battle, the outcome of a man can be determined by fists. Z's fist was very heavy and his Busos Hoku had already been practiced to the point of perfection. In front of him, Vlad was still too inexperienced. His haki was still lacking. Whether it was Busos Hoku or Visual, both were the same. He was worthy of being a great general. He had no shortcomings in his strength. But Vlad was not weak either. He was not weak either. If his haki couldn't be compared to that then he had to rely on his physical strength. This little 70-year-old Z was no match for the old Vlad. Moreover, Vlad had the fire dragon fruit. The strength of the dragonborn form and the ability to resist attacks were far beyond ordinary people. Ha 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 ha. Powerless, powerless, powerless. Mr. Z. Your fist. It doesn't have weight. Vlad took Z's punch. The huge fist directly hit Vlad's face. Although he was arrogant, but in fact, Vlad's face was a bit deformed by this blow. His mind was a bit blank. However, although he took a heavy blow, at the same time, the opportunity also came. Wahaha. Vlad's thick right leg was burning with a platinum flame. A pitch black hacky aura covered the dragon scales. This move, will be called. Dragon Fist Big Break. Bang. The air was overwhelmed and Vlad's right leg was like a pillar that directly tore through the air and hit Z's stomach. Puff. The dull sound spread, Z's clothes directly burst open and a ripple spread out. Bang. Blurg. Z face turned pale and a mouthful of blood gushed out from his mouth. Then under the great power of Vlad, he was directly sent flying. Who? 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 Vlad, who was still in the same place, couldn't chase after him. His eyes were blank and he was gasping for breath. Z's punch just now wasn't fun. It was as hard as a sea tower stone. In addition to the old man's terrifying strength, the punch landed heavily on Vlad's face. Vlad was able to regain his consciousness. A heavy blow was already a reflection of Vlad's endurance. That old man's strength was really terrifying. Vlad's mind was in a daze. It was as if there were 10,000 horses galloping in his mind. He unconsciously shook his head. What a heavy blow. Bang. Little brat. Well done. The deep voice of the man came from below. With a bang, the man named Z stepped on the air and attacked again. His face was still pale and there was a trace of blood on the corner of his mouth. His stomach was red and even some skin was peeled off. It was obvious that Vlad's fierce attack was not useless. Hey, hey, is this old man really 70 years old? Vlad had a headache. Can't he be seriously injured? But thinking about it, if it was really easy to defeat a former admiral, Vlad would not be so timid in the paradise, he would have gone to the new world to make trouble. Puff. With a low voice, a heavy mechanical arm cut through the air and smashed straight at Vlad. Z's eyes were very serious. Obviously, in his heart, Vlad had changed from a pirate to a powerful pirate who could compete with him. Cut. Big break. Vlad repeated the same move and raised his leg to strike out with a heavy whip kick. Boom. In the blink of an eye, a strong wind blew in all directions, and a loud boom resounded through the sky. Wow. With a scream, Vlad was directly sent flying. Z showed more power than before. Vlad flapped his wings to maintain his balance and stopped in the air. He only felt that his right leg was a little numb, especially the one that directly hit Z's mechanical arm was almost numb. After all, Z's mechanical arm was made of sea stone, and with Z's hacky, the hardness was not a joke. 
Vlad looked at Z from afar and found that his condition was not very good. After this period of high-intensity battle, Z also began to pant violently. It seemed that he was a little short of breath. Is that so? Vlad muttered to himself, is the condition not light now? Vlad thought. Mr. Z, it looks like your body can't hold on much longer. Vlad laughed. Kid, when you are talking big, can you stop your legs from shaking? Z replied. Mr. Z, although I like to fight hand to hand, but occasionally using other tricks is also very interesting. Vlad said. Who will let you get what you want? Z was an old man, naturally he would not do such a stupid thing like watching the other party play big. He stepped hard like a phantom and rushed straight to Vlad. I'm sorry. Vlad flapped his wings and turned into a red lightning bolt. He instantly distanced himself from Z. It seems that I am faster. That may not be the case. Bang. Z smiled and raised his huge mechanical arm. With a dull sound, a shell shot out. What's the use of this? Vlad gently turned around and saw that the observation hacky had already noticed the trajectory of the shell and easily avoided it. Who? Vlad turned around and a black shadow streaked across his face without any warning. Hey, Mr. Z, you are not honest. Vlad sounded a little resentful. That was a sea stone, right? Who knows? Z didn't respond but his face was a bit gloomy. Well, it doesn't matter. Vlad put his hands together. What should this move be called? Vlad slowly opened his hands. A long spear that emitted a strong light appeared in his hands. White gold flames fluttered on it. As the long spear appeared, the air seemed to burn. Even Vlad, who was far away, had a hot wind blowing on his face. His hair seemed to be burning. The biggest difference between the white gold flames and the previous flames was that the white gold flames gradually had a form. Although it was not too condensed, such a thing could still be done. Vlad raised the long spear with his right hand and made a javelin throw. The muscles on his right arm bulged. Fall like a meteor, Mr. Z. This move is called. The spear left his hand and turned into a meteor that flew toward Z. Meteor Spear Chapter 81, Deathmatch Z's eyes narrowed. He was surprised for the first time. Even if the power that Vlad displayed before was strong, it didn't move him. After all, although Vlad was strong, he was still far inferior to Z. But this time, it was different. It was completely different. Vlad used all his strength to throw the meteor lance. It was completely different from the previous moves. The speed was fast to a terrifying level. Z could feel that his Kanbunshoku was very strong. Vlad's meteor lance was very fast. It was so fast that if he looked at it with his eyes, he wouldn't even be able to leave a shadow. But Z's Kanbunshoku was still above it. It was because of Z's horror that he was able to perceive the horror of Vlad's move. That kind of speed was far above the reaction speed of a human. Even Z was no exception. After all, he was seriously ill and his body was far worse than before. So even if Z could use visual to lock onto the spear that was emitting endless light and heat, but he couldn't dodge it. Facing Vlad's attack, Z only had time to slightly raise his mechanical arm to block it. Even if he was Z, he wouldn't be able to do it. Light endless light. A bright light that was far more dazzling than the sun in the sky instantly erupted. Another dazzling sun suddenly appeared in the sky. The platinum color instantly infected the entire sea. It was far more gorgeous than the sun, far more dazzling than the light of the sea. How bright was that? What kind of glory was that? How dazzling was that? At this moment, heaven and earth lost their color. Then what spread out was heat, incomparable heat. The surface of the sea below even emitted a strange sound. There was even a thin layer of fog that began to spread. The scope of the fog was still constantly expanding, and it was still constantly spreading. Fortunately, the battlefield of the two was far away from the sea of the previous warships. Otherwise, the ships would have burned after this blow. The sea began to evaporate. Boom! After that, there was a roar that resounded through the heavens and earth. The sky was crying, the sea was shaking and there was no other sound between the heavens and the sea. Only this terrifying explosion that resounded through the heavens remained. A huge mushroom cloud spread out. The strong airflow was like a storm, as if it had encountered the most terrifying storm in the sea. The violent wind blew wantonly. Hey, hey, hey. The strong wind was so strong that Vlad was blown back repeatedly with an excited smile on his face. Who, who, who? 
Is it that powerful? This was also the first time that Vlad had used this move. Before this, it was only limited to imagination. He really didn't expect that its power would actually reach such a level. It's just that the consumption is a bit too big. Vlad gasped for breath. He felt that his hands and feet were a little weak. His flame came from his ability to transform into a fire dragon, and the transformation consumed his physical strength. This kind of move was really too exhausting. He had always disliked this type of AoE move. It was not worth it. It was better to punch the enemy to death. But this time it was different. The old man Z on the other side was really powerful. In terms of physical skills, there was still a big gap between Vlad and this man who had the title of Black Hand. He was really a very strong old man. Wahahahaha. Vlad laughed. This kind of long-range AoE is quite interesting. This was the first time Vlad had such an idea. Pfft. A small hole suddenly appeared in the raging flames in the sky. A man rushed out. It was a ragged and somewhat old man. No. Before Vlad could finish his words, a fist wrapped in an incomplete Busos Hoku smashed into his face. Bang. Vlad was directly sent flying far away. Z's appearance was really not good. His clothes and hair were basically burned and his body was covered with large burns. His face, chest, and arms were all black. His skin was almost destroyed. There was a huge wound on his stomach and his flesh was somewhat carbonized. The huge mechanical arm on his right arm had been completely destroyed, leaving only his lower prosthetic arm. But his eyes were firm and determined. Hey, 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 are you serious? Vlad wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth and looked at Z with surprise. You want to fight with such injuries? Or should I say, you can fight? Mr. Z, are you a monster? Brat. Z's body closed in on Vlad in a flash. His leg whipped the wind and the clouds, and he fiercely whipped at Vlad's neck. Don't underestimate the veterans too much. I want to say don't look down on me. Since the enemy has not lost their ability to fight, then there is no need to stop. Fighting, only fighting, only fighting with their lives on the line. This is the way to survive in the sea. Vlad clenched his right fist. The hacky aura wrapped around him. Some of the weak platinum flames came out and attached to it. After all, the consumption was too big. The heavy fist slammed into Z's whip leg. Bang. The dull sound brought with it a strong wind. Ha. Huh. Z didn't succeed in his attack and a new attack immediately came. His right hand which lost the mechanical arm became more flexible. He directly punched with his right hook and directly hit Vlad in the face. Well. Vlad was beaten badly by this attack, but he wasn't someone who couldn't fight back. He raised his right leg and kicked Z in the stomach. The huge force didn't push Z back. He gritted his teeth and his eyes were full of blood. It was too ugly to be repelled by a pirate again and again. Z twisted his body and spun around. His right leg was like a huge steel whip and directly hit Vlad on the shoulder. Crack. Puff. Vlad spat out a mouthful of fresh blood. He clearly heard the sound of bones breaking on his shoulder. It was really a powerful blow. How powerful? Vlad's ferocious dragon head had a wild smile on it. He did not want to admit defeat. How could he be defeated here by an old man? Vlad flapped his wings forcefully, maintaining his figure. At the same time, he clenched his left fist quietly. The white gold flames burned once again. Dragon fist any punch. A heavy punch landed on Z's face. Puff. Vlad could clearly see that the moment Z's face changed, he could see the teeth that he spat out as he spat out a mouthful of blood. Bang. Z took a step and instantly forced himself into Vlad's arms. Blurg. Vlad wanted to vomit but he held back. This was a life and death battle. Ha. Huh. Vlad roared, his forehead was covered with black busos hoku, he threw it down and directly hit Z's forehead. Dang. The fierce battle continued. Chapter 82, Silent Ending Who? 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 Vlad gasped for breath. His current appearance was miserable. The red scales on his body were broken and blood flowed freely. The long horn on his head was broken by Z's iron fist. The figure of Z in Vlad's eyes was a bit blurry. His right eye was red and swollen. If he squinted, he wouldn't be able to see anything. Even his left eye was bruised. He was punched hard by Z just now. It was really amazing. Z's condition was also not good. His body was weaker than Vlad. 
he was already seventy years old. Under the torture of years and illness, even the strongest man was weakened. As for Vlad who had the ability to strengthen his body, Z had been fighting against Vlad with his physical body. Z's body was full of burn marks. The glasses on his face had long been blown away by Vlad. There was a huge wound on his forehead that was constantly oozing blood. Several teeth in his mouth had been knocked away. There were several teeth missing from his mouth. It looked a bit funny. His arms and legs had several degrees of distortion. It was obvious that he was seriously injured. Oh ha ha ha, who? Vlad smiled with some effort. Mr. Z, it looks like you can't hold on much longer. Cough cough. Kid. Z coughed twice and threw a punch. You are the one who is about to lose your balance. Vlad didn't dodge, he didn't have any intention of dodging, he just let Z punch him directly in the chest. Puff. Vlad spat out another mouthful of blood, his sternum was probably broken a few times, but at this moment his counterattack arrived. His trembling right fist clenched tightly, the black hacky began to spread, but soon it dissipated, the white gold flame came out like a flame, but it was extinguished after a moment. Whether it was body or hacky, both had reached the limit, Vlad couldn't help but think. Bang! Even though it was just an ordinary punch, Vlad still threw a punch at Z without hesitation. The air seemed to be torn apart and Vlad's punch landed heavily on Z's stomach. Puff! Z also spat out a mouthful of blood. In the blood, he could see the fragments of his internal organs. His physical strength was also at its limit. He could no longer support a high-intensity battle. Ha ha ha! Vlad's swollen face had a savage smile on it. He twisted his body and his tail, like a steel whip, directly hit Z on the shoulder. Ka! The sound of bones cracking was heard. Vlad originally planned to pull Z down with his tail. According to the current situation of the old man, he should not have any strength to continue fighting. But Vlad underestimated the madness of the old soldier. Z's mouth was full of blood but his eyes were firm. The prosthesis on his right arm did not affect his determination. He directly hugged Vlad's long and powerful tail and laughed. Kid, don't think it will end so easily. Bang! Z's fist was still as hard as before, his strength and speed were the same. Vlad once again clearly experienced this point. Z's left fist heavily hit his stomach. This time, it was Vlad's turn to vomit blood. This is really troublesome. Damn old man! Vlad shouted. He gathered his strength and punched Z in the face. Bang! Z's face instantly changed and blood gushed out like it was free. The fight continued. The two men were exhausted and had been seriously injured, but there was still an inexplicable force supporting them, supporting them to fight with their lives on the line. Faith was the greatest power of mankind. The yearning for freedom and the persistence of justice were far stronger than real physical strength. It injected new strength into the two bodies that had been hollowed out. How can you fall here? Vlad thought so, my sailing is just beginning. How can I be defeated by this old man? Isn't that too sad? Don't think about escaping easily. Pirates. Z thought so, even if it is Snowden's child, even if it is the child of his family, but bastard, pirates are pirates after all, evil is evil. Brat, Snowden has no reason to teach you. Let me teach you, what is justice. Justice is eternal and justice is invincible. Arg! Vlad roared as all the strength in his body gathered into this punch. His eyes were firm and his smile was wanton. Old man, if you want to stop me, try it. If you can do it, just try it. Stop being arrogant, little brat. When I was in the sea, you were playing with mud. Z punched out with his left fist. His left arm was full of scars and his muscles were bulging. It looked extremely terrifying. Since you chose not to take the right path, then don't blame me for being merciless. Boy, pirates are evil. Bang! Time seemed to freeze at this moment. Vlad's fist slammed on Z's face. Z's fist also hit Vlad's face. Both of them had a blank look in their eyes and had lost the strength to think. Crack! The wind and clouds changed color, and the powerful waves of air spread out like waves. P.U. P.U. The two of them suddenly separated and blood sprayed into the sky. Z no longer used the power of Moonstep. Vlad no longer had the power to wave his wings. Both of their heads were hit at the same time and their consciousness was blank. Below, below, is the sea. Vlad forced himself to open his eyes and look down at the blue sea that was getting closer and closer. Win, 
win, win. Z muttered to himself, below was the sea, that kid was an ability user, if he fell, he would be dead, in the end he won. Z shook his head fiercely, his trembling legs wanted to move, he could use Moonwalk to get that kid out. But. Ka. A violent discomfort suddenly came. Z suddenly opened his eyes wide and his powerless arm covered his chest. At this moment he suddenly felt a strong breathing rush. After a cruel death fight, his illness finally relapsed. Is it the sea? If I falls, I will be dead. Do you want to die like this? Vlad thought. What kind of joke is this? How could I die here? I, I, Fernand Vlad, am not just a man of this level. Vlad roared angrily. His already dried up body suddenly had an additional strength. His wings, which were already sore and weak and could barely move, suddenly could move again. Swish. Vlad soared into the sky. Z couldn't move. The strong pain was torturing him. His breathing stopped several times. His tall body was curled up. He was no longer as fierce as he was when he fought Vlad. Is this end? Z thought so, well, in this way we can meet those guys who left first, right? Hey, 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 old man. Z's falling body instantly stopped. He heard the man's voice in his ear, is it a pity for a guy like you to fall here? Is it? Snowden. Z said in a trance. You guess. Vlad laughed. Pirates and the Navy, Vlad and Z. The battle between the two people connected by the same person finally came to an end. Chapter 83, The Brat and the Old Man At the same time, on the warship, the battle between the two groups was still going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The maid was very excited. This was the first time she had fought in a real battle since she learned to be domineering. Her opponent was not strong, which made her feel like she was testing her moves. Hey, 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 hide faster. Baby 5's attacks came endlessly, like waves in the sea. The ten fingers turned into ten gun barrels that continuously spat out tongues of fire. The dense barrage kept pouring out, threatening Anne's life at all times. In addition, the maid saw that Kanbuncho Kohaki had some achievements. At least it was more than enough to face an opponent of Anne's level. The maid was really easy to fight. It was just a standing stance output. It was extremely comfortable. Damn it. Anne kept dodging. Baby 5's barrage was so dense that she didn't even have a chance to fight back. Her hacky hadn't reached the point of physical resistance against bullets. Ha ha ha. The maid opened her mouth, and the scene suddenly became a bit strange. A cannon came out of her mouth, take this, eat my mouth. She really did not understand how she spoke. Bang. Anne frowned, jumped abruptly, and dodged the cannon, but at the same time, she became a living target for the maid in the air. Ha ha ha. Die, die, die. The maid's hands turned into two cannons in an instant and shot directly at Anne who was in the air. Retreat. Anne's pupils shrank as he threw out two balls of red light. It's so lively over there. The chef leisurely leaned against the side of the ship, his eyes faintly watching the battle between the maid and Anne. It looked really lively. The confrontation between two powerful fruits was both a cannon and a gun. It was also quite interesting. But for a chef, it was really too low level and completely uninterested. Before he obtained the fruit ability, he could instantly kill the two women with just his hacky and physical skills, not to mention now that he had obtained a very interesting fruit and his strength had improved. This point could be seen from the ninja man who was wrapped in thick butter and completely unable to struggle, this was the power of different dimensions. Damn it, damn pirate. Even if he was defeated by the chef, he was still unwilling, don't think that you can be arrogant for long. Soon Teacher Z will come back to your end. Is that so? The chef said, it seems that you have confidence in Mr. Z. Nonsense. Bin said proudly, Teacher Z is the former. The former admiral, right? The chef asked. You know. Bin's was a little surprised. Since you know. Aren't you being too arrogant? Pirates. Bin's roared angrily. He didn't care but he couldn't tolerate his most respected teacher being insulted. Haha, <laughs> don't misunderstand. The chef said. I am afraid of Mr. Z. Even a confident person would be short of breath when facing an admiral. But, Mr. Navy. The chef said. Since our captain has already charged forward, there is no reason for us to stop at the back. If we are really defeated, then at least. We have to fight back. 
the cook answered. Pirates! Bin said in a low voice, sure enough, they are all crazy people. Whatever you say. The chef put his hands in his pockets. His face was not very happy. Captain, don't fall here. Even he did not have much confidence in the battle between his captain and the former admiral. Well. The chef suddenly looked up, a smile on his face. Ola 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 ola. The maid let out a strange cry, and her two hands turned into two buzzing electric saw, bringing with them waves of arc light, constantly slashing towards Anne. Anne kept dodging, holding two short daggers in her hands. From time to time, she would clash with the electric saw of the maid, causing bursts of sparks. In the end, she was not proficient in her domineering style. She could not make a hardening weapon. In just a few rounds, the dagger was already covered in wounds. Hey! The maid suddenly stopped attacking and looked at the sky. Is it over? The maid said. What? Anne could not help but look up. A figure appeared in the sky and appeared in her sight. Ding! Impossible! The dagger in Anne's hand slipped to the ground. She didn't notice it at all. The young marine unconsciously fell to the ground and muttered, Impossible, this is impossible. Teacher Z, Teacher Z. Anne had a look of disbelief on her face. How is this possible? How could Teacher Z lose? The person in the sky was none other than Vlad who was carrying Z back. The battle between the two was clear. Who? 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 Vlad flapped his wings and gently fell to the ground. He was breathing heavily. He had indeed reached his limit. Plop! Vlad casually threw Z onto the deck. Then he really couldn't hold on any longer. He sat down on the deck with his back against the side of the ship and returned to his human form. His clothes were tattered but he didn't care. He really didn't have the strength to move. Teacher Z! Anne reacted very excitedly and instantly threw herself at Z. Her tears couldn't stop and instantly poured down like rain. Hey, woman. Vlad struggled to speak but he still smiled and said, If I were you, it would be best to bring Mr. Z's medicine now. His current situation is not good. Anne raised her head and looked at Vlad with hatred in her eyes. Ha 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 ha. Cough. Vlad laughed and then coughed violently. Do you hate me? Then try to get rid of me. You. A flash of anger appeared on Anne's face. Mr. Captain, it's better to speak less. The chef slowly walked over with a bitter smile on his face. He turned to Anne and said, Miss Marine, you should go find some medicine for Mr. Z first. I think Mr. Z is really sick. It is asthma. It can't wait for long. I don't need you to pity me. Anne looked at Vlad with resentment and gently carried Z behind her back. Captain, isn't it a bit too miserable? The chef looked at the wounded Vlad with a smile on his face. In the face of an admiral, it was hard to imagine that he could win. I have no choice. Vlad smiled and looked at Z who had been helped up by Anne. His voice was very soft and his injury was very serious, that old man is super strong. I almost couldn't win. Then, Captain, should we kill them? The maid's eyes flashed with killing intent. Right now, her group had an absolute advantage. Ha 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 ha. What nonsense are you saying? It's still too early to have a falling out with the Marines. Vlad said leisurely. Hey, Anne, right. Vlad tilted his head and said, Do you want to come to me? I like you very much. Stop dreaming. Pirates. Anne looked at Vlad as if he was the enemy who killed her father. It was no wonder that Z was no different from her father. If that's the case, then forget it. Vlad did not fly into a rage out of humiliation. Forget it, chef. Let's go back. All right, captain. The chef responded and walked to the side of the ship. He stretched out his hands and a yellowish-yellow solid object shot out. Hard butter oil road. A butter road instantly appeared on the surface of the sea. Previously, he and the maid had really used this method to come over. The chef helped Vlad up and wanted to leave. Little brat. Z, who was carried by Anne, regained his consciousness. He looked at Vlad who was about to leave and said, Don't think that I will be grateful to you. Is that so? Vlad was not to be outdone. He replied, Then will you be grateful next time? Arrogant brat. Z said. Stubborn old man. Vlad said. The chef helped Vlad jump off the naval warship. This sudden encounter finally came to an end. Chapter 84, Navy and Pirates
the small pirate ship gradually moved away and soon disappeared into the sea. The night gradually replaced the day. A crescent moon hung in the sky and the night came. The pirate gorilla's warship was quiet. The sudden battle during the day made these proud marine soldiers lower their proud heads. They didn't even see the enemy's face and were defeated by an unknown. As a marine, it was too shameful. They no longer had the confidence to be arrogant. Teacher Z. Anne was a little worried as she sat on the edge of the bed. Her hands were trembling and her expression was very serious. After the fight with Vlad, Z was seriously injured and there were not many parts of his body that were intact. In addition to the sudden outbreak of illness, if not for the timely treatment, he wouldn't have been able to come back. Z was still lying on the bed like a mummy. For a strong person like Z, it was really an unimaginable thing. Damn it! Bins who had broken free from the shackles of butter stood by the door and looked at his teacher who was lying on the bed. The anger in his heart was still suppressed to a very high level. Those pirates, those bastards. This was an uncontrollable anger, not only for the pirates, but also for himself. His most respected teacher was actually hurt to such an extent. As a disciple, Bins once again felt her powerlessness, just like a few years ago. Teacher Z once again suffered a huge injury to protect himself and the others. Damn it! Bang! Bins punched the wall and tears of regret flowed from his eyes. Why can't I help? Every word was like a cuckoo crying blood. Bins, my disciple! A weak voice sounded, breaking the silence in the sick room. There is no need to blame yourself, stupid boy. Teacher Z. Anne stood up with tears in her eyes. Her face was full of relief. For her, Z was not just a teacher. He was like a father and was undoubtedly the closest person in the world. You are awake? Teacher Z. Anne moved to the side of the bed with excitement in her eyes. Teacher Z. Bins was also very excited and moved to the side of the bed, the tears in his eyes were not clear yet. You are crying, Bins. Z's tone sounded a bit dissatisfied. Didn't I say that a man should laugh when he wants to cry? Yes. Bins wiped his eyes. He didn't want Z to be disappointed no matter what. He didn't want to let this man who he treated as his father be disappointed. I'm sorry, Teacher Z. Today I was too out of control. I was actually defeated by a pirate. Silly boy, what is there to be ashamed of? Z laughed, I was also defeated by a pirate. Do I have to commit suicide out of shame? Spare me, I still want to live a few more years. Teacher Z. Bins was unusually agitated and her expression was even a little ferocious. This is different. Teacher Z, you are acting up because of your illness, but I am different. The other party is about the same age as me, but, but. I don't have the strength to fight back. I can't even fight back against the other party. If not for the other party not wanting to kill me, I would have already died. With me like this, such a weak me, can I really stay on this ship? Binz's tone was like crying. On the side, Anne was also gloomy. She clearly understood her weakness in today's battle. She didn't have much strength to fight back against pirates. She was too weak, just like that day a few years ago. What nonsense are you saying? Z's mouth slightly curled up. The old man naturally understood that his disciple had fallen into confusion. You are already very strong. The two disciples raised their heads at the same time and looked at their teacher. My disciples, the so-called strength is not just the physical strength. Z said. The real strength is the strength of the heart. The most important thing for the real strong is to have a strong heart. Only the strong mind can control the strong power. But Bin still wanted to say something. Silly boy. Z said. You dare to fight against an enemy far stronger than you. You are willing to bet your life for justice. You are already a qualified marine. A man is willing to bet his life for his own sake. Isn't he cool? With you like this, who can say you are weak? As a teacher, I am very satisfied with you. Z voice was very serious. Teacher Z. The tall man lowered his head and immediately raised his head. His whole appearance immediately changed. Ha ha ha. Z laughed, and, where is the den den mushy connected to the HQ? Although it is embarrassing, but this matter must be repaid. Snowden, your son is really an amazing guy. Ayaya. Yeah, yeah. I want to die, I want to die, I want to die. At this time, as the winner, Vlad, who also did not have many good places on his body, was wrapped in bandages like a rice dumpling. 
Only his eyes, mouth, and nose were exposed, and his mouth let out a wail like a pig being slaughtered. Captain, please be quiet. As a man who had received a professional education and knew a little about medicine, the chef took over the heavy burden of bandaging Vlad in the difficult environment without a boat doctor on board. He was holding a roll of bandage in his hand and rolling it over Vlad. It's just a simple treatment. There's no need to make such a fuss, right? The chef said lightly, as if it was a simple matter to treat Vlad. The problem is, are you treating me? Don't you really want to kill me? Vlad's face was covered in cold sweat. My bones were originally broken by you, all right. I'm sorry, Mr. Captain. I didn't actually do it. The chef apologized very guiltily. He was sincere and didn't seem to be faking it at all. After interacting with him for so long, Vlad understood his chef very well. Therefore, he knew very well that he was not lying. He was really apologizing. Faced with such an unpretentious apology, Vlad had no way of refusing. Forget it, you can continue. Yes, Mr. Captain. The chef stretched out his hand. Ah! My waist! A scream resounded through the sky. Chapter 85, People You Know Marine Ford, the headquarters of the Marine Headquarters might be the most heavily guarded place in this world. There is no doubt that this is the forbidden land of pirates, the holy land of the Marine, the center of justice. At this moment, the headquarters was not calm. The news that came not long ago completely broke the silence of Marine Ford. The generals of the Marine quickly began to gather in the office. Crack! Crack! The door of the office was pushed open, and a tall, curly-haired man walked in with a lazy expression on his face. He looked at the shocked faces of the Navy generals sitting in the office. Oh my! What happened? The person found a seat and sat down. He leaned back in his chair and asked casually, I was really shocked. I haven't seen such a big scene in a long time. Cusin, you are back. The man sitting at the top, the Admiral of the Navy, Sengoku of the Buddha said, How is the completion of the mission? A mission? This is really shameful, it failed. The person who came was none other than the man that Vlad met in the New World. He was one of the three admirals of the world government, Aokiji Kyuzen. This man was scratching his hair, but there was no embarrassment on his face. The whereabouts of that man is really hard to find. Yes, I went all the way to the New World with great difficulty. Kyuzen said with some difficulty. It's really a pity that I failed. Is that so? Sengoku held his chin with both hands and said with some understanding, that's right, if it was so easy to catch the whereabouts of that man, then it would be so easy to find him, and he would not become a big trouble for the government. Ha 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 ha. Clap clap. The tall old man with white hair walked to Aokiji and slapped Aokiji on the shoulder. The sound echoed in the office. Kyuzen, you kid, didn't you go to the New World for free? The old man was named Garp, Monkey. D. Garp. The man who was called a marine hero looked particularly unreliable at this moment. I'm really envious. It's not good to be old. I also want to go to play. Hey, Sengoku, I also want to take a break. The old man was like an old child, the officers in the office couldn't help but smile. Mr. Garp Aokiji was a little helpless, this old man really made people worry. Garp. The veins on Sengoku's forehead were bulging and his anger couldn't be suppressed. Even his old partner who had been together for decades couldn't stand this old man's heartlessness. Bastard, who do you think Kyuzen is chasing? Who do you think that bastard dragon is? Do you know that your bastard son has become a big problem for the government? Ha 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 ha. Garp reached out his right hand to dig his nose, he didn't care about Sengoku's roar and laughed, Dragon is really amazing, he is worthy of being my son. Garp. Sengoku completely broke out, you bastard. Enough. Sengoku, this isn't what we are discussing right now. The thin old lady sitting on the side said in a low voice, there is something more important now. This old lady was none other than the Vice Admiral of the Marine, Vice Admiral Tsuru, a senior who joined the Marine in the same year as Sengoku and Garp. Ha 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 ha. Sengoku, you see, little Tsuru is not as bad as you. Garp was still laughing. You. Forget it. Sengoku fell back to his seat. He was helpless against his old friend. Now, let's discuss this guy who suddenly appeared. Sengoku said in a serious tone. It's just a guy who has offended justice, I can't tolerate it. 
The man sitting next to Aokiji with his hands crossed over his chest said with a heavy murderous tone. Only by completely suppressing these righteous guys who dare to offend the marine can the sea get real peace. The general, Akainu, was still as ruthless as ever. Arera, this is really... Aokiji put his right hand on the table and lazily asked, didn't anyone tell me what happened? Aokiji was a little distressed, he felt abandoned by the world, everyone knew that only he didn't know how sad it was. Kyuzen, you don't know. A middle-aged man wearing a righteous cloak and a yellow striped suit asked in surprise. There was no doubt that this man was the same as Aokiji and Akainu as the three admirals of the marine headquarter. This is really a big event. Kizaru's tone was very strange. There was a strange tone in his voice. How to put it? It was really annoying. Combined with his wretched old face, he was really a man who deserved a beating just by looking at his face. Big event. Aokiji was a little surprised, what big event? It happened yesterday. When the news came back, many people were scared silly. Kizaru smiled and explained, Teacher Z, the pirate guerrilla team that Teacher Z formed was defeated by a group of pirates yesterday. What? Aokiji was really shocked. Z was his teacher, one of his most respected elders. He couldn't trust Z's strength. He was a man who used to be an admiral. Even if he lost a hand and was tortured by illness, it was not something that an ordinary pirate could defeat. Could it be that the Yonko came to the paradise? Oh, it is really hard to imagine. They are a group of new pirates. There are only three pirates participating in the battle and they have completely defeated Teacher Z's fleet. Teacher Z is still lying in bed. I heard that the pirates saved Teacher Z's life. This is really... Kizaru's tone was a bit strange. He and Z didn't get along well. A long time ago in the recruit training camp, there was already a problem. But he still recognized Z's strength. He was defeated by an unknown pirate and let go of a pirate. Kizaru felt very strange. Arera. Aokiji sat up straight and said, This is really a big event. Do all the new pirates have this kind of strength? Are you kidding, a new pirate who just went out to sea has the strength to defeat an ex-admiral, how can the marine survive? Take a look, Kyuzen, that group of pirates. Kizaru handed over a few pieces of paper, his tone was erratic. Hey, 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 no, this is really a big surprise. Aokiji took it and glanced at it. A shocked expression instantly appeared on his face. There was no doubt that he knew the arrogant guy on it. Chapter 86, Headquarters Decision Aokiji's voice was particularly surprised, as if he saw Sengoku go to the Red District, it was really a very surprising thing. Arera, this is really a big surprise. Aokiji said. What's wrong? Kyuzen, is there a problem? Sengoku pushed the glasses on his nose, his tone was a bit dissatisfied. This was the meeting of all the high-ranking officers of the Marine. Even if Aokiji disturbed the meeting, it would make Sengoku unhappy. This man. Aokiji waved the thin paper in his hand. The man's arrogant expression was very conspicuous. At first glance, it gave people a feeling of madness. At first glance, they would think that this man was no ordinary person. Mr. Sengoku, I know him. Aokiji's tone was very calm, but his words were like a huge stone thrown into the calm water. The officers were stunned for a moment, but in the blink of an eye, the noise completely shrouded the office. Really? Hey, Mr. Kyuzen, are you kidding? Does Mr. Kyuzen know that guy? To be able to step into this office, one had to be at least a lieutenant general or a lieutenant general ranked in the front. The shame of a lieutenant general like Maynard was not qualified to participate in this kind of meeting. But now, these leaders of the Marines, who were high and powerful, added up to be the most terrifying force in the sea, these guys were like bartenders selling beer in a wine shop. They were very patient and did not have the appearance of a marine. Bang. Silence. A heavy sound echoed in the office. Sengoku slapped the table and said in a very bad tone, Do you still have the appearance of a navy general? With your appearance, how can you lead the soldiers of the sea to fight against the evil of the sea? Don't be too complacent, idiots. The era is waiting for us to uphold justice. Sengoku was in a really bad mood. First, he received news from his old comrade in the middle of the night. He knew that the gorillas were defeated by the pirates. Even Z himself was seriously injured. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, he lost to an unknown new pirate. This made him very angry. Then he was choked by Garp before. Now, 
these guys' behavior made him angry. Well, calm down, Sengoku, you too. At the critical moment, this old woman was the most reliable person in the headquarters. Kyuzen, what do you know? This time, it was Aokichi's turn to be the center of attention. All the admirals present except for Garp, Sengoku, and he were all disciples of Z. As for the relationship between the three people from the previous generation, it was a friendship that had started since the recruit period. It could be said that all the people in this office had a deep relationship with Z. This man, Ferdinand Vlad, I know him. Aokiji said. Is that so? Sengoku calmed down and said in a deep voice, tell me in detail. Aokiji didn't intend to keep it a secret. After all, he and Vlad were just acquaintances. There was no need for him to keep it a secret. Moreover, even if the two of them had a good relationship, Aokiji wouldn't hesitate to choose what to do after his teacher was hurt. I saw him in the New World. At that time, he was on a merchant ship and was preparing to return to the first half of the Grand Line. We stayed on the same ship for a few days. At that time, we were chatting happily. Aokiji said. Humph. Akainu snorted. Although at that time, Vlad was not a pirate, but for Akainu, Aokiji's behavior made him unhappy. Aokiji told him everything that happened between him and Vlad without hiding anything. Is that so? Sengoku's eyes flashed, in other words, he passed by Mary Gosa and returned to the first half of the Grand Line. Mary Gosa. Crane instantly understood what Sengoku was saying. Yes, that merchant ship really passed by Mary Gosa. Aokiji answered honestly. Is that so? Sengoku muttered to himself, Z sent back information. This guy, Ferdinand Vlad is an devil fruit user, and he is a Zoan type. He can transform into a huge fire dragon and use a very powerful platinum flame. His power is far above the flame that appeared in Mary Gosa, but he doesn't have the power to burn everything. The two seem different. It doesn't matter. With his hands crossed over his chest and his face hidden in the shadows, Akainu said in a low voice, whether he is the arsonist or not, whether it is him or not, just the crime of attacking the navy is enough to crush him. Sengoku didn't answer. Unlike Akainu who didn't care about anything and only wanted to exercise justice and eliminate evil. As the admiral of the navy, he had to consider the reaction of the world government. There is some information that cannot be confirmed whether the other party is the arsonist of Maria. Although the timing of his appearance is very coincidental, but in terms of ability, there is no doubt that there is a big difference between him and the arsonist. Lieutenant General Tsuru crossed her arms around her chest and said in a calm tone, but we can't just eliminate him like this. After all, after investigating for so long, he and Fire Fist are the biggest suspects. Hey, little Tsuru, how can Ace be suspicious? Garp couldn't stay on the side. Ace was his grandson. Ace's flames are completely different from the flames that appeared in Mary Gosa. Garp, don't let your family blind your judgment. Sengoku didn't show any mercy, who knows if the Fire Fist has any hidden power. Compared to the Fire Fist, the man who fought to the death with Z was exhausted. If not for the fact that Z was sick, the man who might have been caught might not have used any extra flames. He is more trustworthy. Garp didn't say anything. After all, he was still a Marine. Forget it, there are so many people in the sea who can control fire. Even if this Vlad ship has a guy who can use fire ability. When we can't confirm whether the fire of Mary Gosa is the fire of an ability user, it is difficult to check. Go catch these two guys and take a look. Someone said. Catch them. Sengoku sneered, Fire Fist has entered the new world, who knows where he is. Even if he knows, it is impossible for the Admiral to go deep into the new world. As for this guy. Sengoku shook the photo of Vlad and said in a deep voice, who will catch him? He defeated Z. How many people from the headquarters catch him? Silence permeated the room. Forget it. Sengoku rubbed his nose and slowly let out a breath. He looked very tired. Anyway, the arson case is not under our control. Just report it to the government. As for how to deal with the follow-up, let the government send their own CP. Sengoku's words came to an end for this matter. He couldn't care about it anymore. There were only a handful of pirates who could defeat Z in the sea. In addition to the vast sea, it was a problem to find him or not. It was better to let the government worry about it. But, the bounty still has to be issued. Sengoku looked around and said in a deep voice, How much do you think this man should be? 
Chapter 87, Analyze In the vast sea, a small boat was walking alone. It was a fine weather that was rare. The sea was calm and peaceful. The warm sunlight lazily sprinkled down, giving people a very comfortable feeling. Well, it's really warm. Vlad, who was wrapped in bandages, lay on the reclining chair on the deck and lazily basked in the sun. His mental state became extremely relaxed with the warm sunlight, appearing very relaxed. The chef sat on the deck on the side of the boat. He held a kitchen knife in his hand and carved something on a carrot. When he saw the chef's movements, Vlad's expression that was covered with bandages was a little subtle. How should he say it? He felt a little strange. If he remembered correctly, that knife was indeed the knife that the chef used to fight, right? It was the kitchen knife that had cut many things, right? Was it really okay to cook with such a knife? Vlad was doubtful about this. Captain, is it okay? The chef asked. Hey? What? Vlad replied confidently, of course it doesn't matter. Although your technique is slightly rough, my body is not covered either. Uh. I'm not talking about this. Although I'm quite confident in my own technique. I mean, is it really okay to let go of the marines? The chef put away his knife and looked at Vlad seriously. He had to be serious. Vlad's actions had threatened the survival of this small group to a large extent. Our information has been completely exposed, right? The chef was right. Z and Vlad had already fought to the death. Vlad's ability was basically exposed in front of him. This meant that they had finally entered the site of the marine. In addition, they set off from the Sabayati archipelago. It was easy to connect the Mary G.O.S.A. case of Vlad. If that happened, it would be terrible. There was no need for a reason. If there was a suspicion, it would be enough for the world government to attack them. At that time, I am afraid that the only way to survive is to escape into the new world. Ha 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 ha. Vlad laughed with a guilty conscience, but he didn't regret it at all. Z wasn't any other person. He was his father's teacher. He was the man that the man really regarded as his father. It could be said that the relationship between the two of them could be said to be that of grandfather and grandson. Originally, there were few people in the world who still remembered the man, Vlad, and Snowden. Of course, Vlad was one. Z was undoubtedly one. Vlad didn't want his father to be forgotten by the world. Don't mind it. Chef, don't be afraid. Vlad said. What are you talking about? Mr. Captain, this is not a matter of fear. The chef was a little agitated and the scar on his back suddenly felt a little hot. The unbearable memories of the past once again came, and huge fear instantly seized his heart. We are enemies of the world nobles. If we are discovered, I'm afraid. What nonsense are you saying? How can a chef be discovered? Vlad said. The ability I displayed in front of Z is completely different from the ability I used in Mary G.O.S.A. But, Mr. Captain, the government is not a reasonable person. They won't let us go just because they are not convinced. The chef said in a low voice, for these guys who are self-proclaimed kings of the world, just a small suspicion is already the reason for them to make a move. No, what you said is wrong. Vlad lay on the reclining chair and looked at the sky leisurely. His eyes were very lazy. He did not seem to mind at all. The world government is unable to confirm whether we are really arsonists or not. After all, the flame user who appeared had a fire fist. In addition, the flame I displayed was completely different from before. They are unable to confirm it. But... The chef was a little excited. Don't worry, don't worry, let me analyze it for you. The situation we are facing now isn't too bad. Vlad laughed, his attitude was very casual and he had the demeanor of a big shot. Yes, you are right. Chef, I have already displayed the ability of fire in front of Z. I will naturally enter the eyes of the world government. Moreover, that guy should have already returned to the headquarters. Aokiji. The cook frowned. That's right, Kyuzen. I never thought that I would meet him in the New World, or on the ship that would pass by Mary G.O.S.A. Vlad was a little emotional. It was really bad luck. Then isn't it terrible? The chef said. That's right, it's really terrible at first glance. Vlad said. The Navy and the government probably knew that I had been to Mary G.O.S.A and it was very close to the time when Mary G.O.S.A. was attacked. My suspicion has broken through the sky. Then, then what? The chef calmed down. Indeed, it is true. Right now, 
I am very suspicious of the government. However, it is impossible to be completely sure. After all, no one has seen who the arsonist is. Naturally, they can't confirm that I am the arsonist. But, just like you said, the chef and the government are not reasonable people. Their dignity cannot be offended. This is without a doubt, that is to say, even if I am only a little suspicious, it is enough for them to take action. Vlad said in a very light tone. So, Mr. Captain, do you have any other ideas? The chef whispered. There is only one thing that you have not considered, chef. Vlad raised a finger with difficulty. He had to say that Z was really strong. If not for Z suddenly acting up that day, it would be hard to say who would win in the end. Several days had passed and Vlad still hadn't fully recovered. As an enemy, it was really tricky. What is it? The chef asked. You just forgot that the Navy will not come to suppress us. What do you mean? The chef asked. Vlad said, we are not some Tom, Dick or Harry pirates. We defeated the Navy fleet led by the former Admiral. So. The chef's eyes lit up. So, chef, even if they are the most powerful force under the world government, the Marine, even if they want to suppress us, I'm afraid they have to be led by a general, and they have to bring two vice admirals. After all, you and the mate are not weak. But, will the Marine send such a force for us? Of course not. The chef continued, the Navy has suppressed the four seas and has run the first half of the Great Trade Route like an iron bucket. However, their forces have always been stretched. As for the strength of the general level, it is even more so. One general is stationed in the headquarters all year round, one general is stationed in the New World, and the other one has to deal with the occasional pirates. The Revolutionary Army is rioting, they do not have any extra strength to chase us. That's right. Vlad smiled. The Navy is not willing to pay the price for wanting to suppress us. The Navy and the world government have never been on the same side. Yes. The chef smiled. The Navy is the strongest army under the world government. Their strength has even surpassed the sum of other forces under the government. How can such a powerful army, such a righteous army, be led by the government? The government probably won't trust them, right? So. The chef smiled. So, what we need to be wary of next is the peeping of the CP. Vlad said, before confirming that we are the troublemakers, the Navy will not easily take action. Ha 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 ha. The chef laughed out loud, so that's how it is. Chapter 88 the name of Fire Dragon resounds through the sea, 1. In addition to doubt and worry, the chef went back to the kitchen to make dessert for Vlad. Vlad, who was seriously injured, thought that he needed a lot of desserts to replenish his sugar. Otherwise, the recovery of his injury would definitely be affected. There was no doubt that sugar was the most important self-healing factor in the human body. Vlad had always thought this way. Life without sugar was not perfect. A day without sugar was very sad. Although Vlad did not like sweets, he believed this very much. After all, it was a very simple principle. If he did not eat desserts for a few days, he would feel weak all over. This kind of experience was not his personal privilege. There must be many people who would have this experience. Vlad lazily basked in the sun. The gentle sunlight fell on his body and it was really comfortable. It had to be said that relaxing and resting after a great battle was really a very pleasant thing. Only after experiencing a life and death battle would one feel the love and desire for life from the heart. Accompanied by the warm sunlight, Vlad gradually fell asleep. There was no other way. The sailing life was already boring enough. Now that he was injured and tied up like a dumpling, there were less things he could do. He could only sleep to pass the time. Hey, why did the price rise again? In a daze, Vlad heard the maid's angry voice. What? It will rise again. Profiteer. They are all profiteers. Bang. You still want to run. The maid's voice was a little angry. Vlad opened his eyes in a daze. What he saw was that the maid had shot at the sky, and a white thing fell down. Hey, chef, take it to Stu. Baby Five picked up the newsbird that had fallen to the ground. Her tone was still full of anger. He dared to sell a newspaper for 500 berry. He was really robbing money. This, isn't it a little bad? Dino walked out of the cabin and saw the newsbird in the maid's hand. The corners of his mouth twitched. Although some pirates who did not have enough food would use the newsbird as a reserve food, they did not lack food. Eating the newsbird was not a good thing. 
the sea relied on these birds to deliver information. Just say whether you want to do it or not. The maid was unhappy with the chef's lack of determination. She had always been a swift and decisive person. Or do you want to waste ingredients as a chef? This. The chef was stunned and then nodded. All right then. The chef did not say much. He took the news bird and entered the cabin. He had already decided to cook a roast bird tonight. Although eating the news bird did not feel good, it was not good to waste food, right? As a chef on the sea, Dino deeply understood the value of food. Any waste was shameful. Maid, give me a newspaper. Since he was already awake, he did not want to sleep anymore. Vlad said loudly. It was good to read the newspaper to kill time. It was more interesting than lying on a chair and counting the clouds in the sky. My captain, don't look like you can't move, okay? The maid tactfully came over and handed over a newspaper. Her tone was not very good. Aren't you a lot better now? Your eating speed was not slow last night. Vlad took a piece of newspaper and said earnestly, Silly child, you used a different body when you robbed. How can you treat everyone equally? Where did this strange theory come from? Miss Maid was also impressed by her captain's shamelessness. At eh. Vlad opened the newspaper, and a few thin pieces of paper slid out. Vlad picked up one of them, and his pupils shrank instantly. Hey, wah ha 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 ha, this is really interesting. Vlad laughed, this is going to be fun. On the thin paper. Vlad's arrogant smile was particularly eye-catching. Without a doubt, it was a wanted poster. This time, I can be considered to be famous in the sea, right? Vlad muttered to himself. The news bird flew all over the world and spread the latest news to all over the world. Due to the limitations of traffic communication, the title of the news bird really did not live up to its name. And on this day, the most eye-catching news was undoubtedly about a man. The man's name was Vlad, Ferdinand Vlad. This unknown man had instantly become famous in the sea. As a new pirate, this man had made the world remember him with his amazing first reward in just a short day. Everyone knew that a powerful pirate had appeared in the sea. An amazing guy had appeared. Vlad, Vlad. The tall and bulky woman looked like a mountain of meat. A terrifying roar came from her mouth, and the shocking sound even made people a little unsteady on their feet. This woman was not someone else, or it was impossible for others to have such power. There was only one woman with such power in the entire sea. Her name was Charlotte Lingling, the birth mother of Ferdinand Vlad. You disobedient brat, are you still alive? Charlotte Lingling was naturally very angry about Vlad's betrayal. Although she dreamed of building a great country that all races could live in peace, there was no need for disobedient people. Kathakuri. Kathakuri. The lady shouted the name of her most trusted son. I'm here, Mom. Kathakuri, whose scarf covered half of his face, stepped forward and responded softly. Go, kill him, kill him, kill this bastard Vlad, Vlad. Charlotte Lingling's huge face instantly approached Kathakuri. Her face was full of killing intent. She hated people who disobeyed her orders. Mom, this can't be done. Kadokuri did not speak. Another man spoke. His name was Charlotte Perro, the eldest son of the Charlotte family. We don't know where Vlad is, how can we kill him? After a brief silence, there was an angry roar. Go and find that bastard. The traitor is not allowed to live in this world. Yes. All the ministers replied in unison. Vlad, why are you still here? Charlotte Kathakuri thought to himself, isn't it good to be alive? Why are you still in front of mom? Why are you so disobedient? Hey, Ace, look, I found something amazing. In the New World, on a nameless island, a group of pirates were fixing up. The girl named Isaka handed Ace a wanted order in her hand. Look, an amazing guy has appeared. Oh. Ace received the wanted poster and immediately revealed an expression that said, I knew that this guy would definitely be famous in the sea. Fire Dragon? No wonder I liked him very much back then. Ace. Isaka looked hesitant. Do you really have to do it? Ah, I have to do it. Ace's expression was extremely firm. Even if I die, I have to give it a try. Chapter 89, The Name of Fire Dragon Resounds Through the Sea, Too. But Ace, have you thought about it? Isaka extremely worried. That man is not some random cat or dog we met before. His strength is not something we can touch now. That's right, Ace. 
it was none other than the man who met Vlad with Ace, one of the original members of the Spades Pirates, Deuce, his tone was a bit heavy, and his expression was very serious, you should know Ace, the horror of that man is not a joke, it is his legendary name written with blood in the sea for decades, and it cannot be shaken by rookie pirates like us. I know, Deuce. Ace's expression was a little strange. He was neither high-spirited nor uneasy. There was another color that was always strange. He did not know how to describe it. It was a look of curiosity and unwillingness. But, I have my reasons. I have my reasons to challenge that man. But, Ace, have you ever considered us? Have you ever considered your companions? Deuce's tone became stern. As the captain, is this how you make a hasty decision? Do you want to take all of us to die? Deuce. Isaka looked at the angry Deuce and felt a little uneasy. I know, I am sorry. Ace's expression was a bit lonely. However, there is only that man. I must go and challenge him. I want to see what kind of man he was. But I don't want to drag you down. So, everyone, the spades are dismissed here. Ace whispered. Bang. The fist that was wrapped in a faint hacky aura directly hit Ace's face. Facing the captain's shocked eyes, he said, Idiot, do you want to die alone? Ace, you. Do you really care about us? Deuce. Ace muttered to himself. Since you have a reason to do it, then I won't ask too much. But, Ace, if you want to go all out. Deuce's expression was very serious. Bring us along. Aren't we companions? If you really want to die, count us in as well. Ace looked a little stunned. Yes, Captain, let's go together. That's right. What are you afraid of? Didn't the Grand Line let us get here together? Ha ha ha. Ace stood up and laughed, all right, then let us see how terrifying the strongest Whitebeard is. Fire Dragon Vlad. Ace looked at the wanted poster in his hand and smiled. I hope we can meet again. Don. 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 The snot-nosed man ran into the palace with a few wanted posters in his hand and called his young master's name all the way. It has appeared. It has finally appeared. Ha 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 ha. Calm down, treble, calm down. Yaksha, Don Quixote da Flamingo sat on the sofa with a smile on his face. What appeared? See for yourself, Doffy. You really gave me a big fright. Treble handed over the wanted poster with a twisted expression on his face. Hey, 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 it can't be. Da Flamingo glanced at the wanted poster, the familiar figure on it made the veins on his forehead burst out. Is she still alive? Baby Five. Not only is she still alive, but she seems to be alive. Treble's tone was full of anger. The anger of the traitor of the family, to this man, Da Flamingo was his heaven, the executor of his own ambition, so naturally, the Don Quixote family was the most important thing in his heart, the thing he did not want others to destroy. The bounty is 180 million berry, baby five this girl is really amazing, this is the name of the sea. Da Flamingo smiled, but his tone was extremely low, the blue veins on his forehead were bulging, everyone who was familiar with him knew that this was his extremely angry performance. Battle maid? It's really a good nickname, ha ha ha. Crack. With Da Flamingo as the center, Treble, who was the closest to him, was trembling. This was the talent of a king, the hacky aura of Da Flamingo. Da Fi. Treble looked at Da Flamingo, this man was indeed worthy of his following. Doff, should we send someone to kill her? The family can't tolerate traitors. Treble said in a cold tone. Hey, 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 what nonsense are you talking about? Treble. Da Flamingo raised the wanted order in his hand, baby five is naturally nothing. The problem is, this guy, this fire dragon Vlad is not a simple guy. The first bounty can have such a high bounty. What did this guy do? Ha. 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 Da Flamingo laughed like a lunatic, this era is really interesting. Powerful guys are coming out one by one. Hey, 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 this guy looks a bit familiar. Someone said in a frivolous tone. Now that you mention it, I really do have some impression of him. Someone picked up a wanted poster and looked at the handsome man on it. He seemed to have thought of something. Isn't this stupid prince? Have you forgotten? It's the stupid prince who came to us alone after the country fell. Someone laughed. Is he called Dino? If I remember correctly, he is called Dino, 
right. The woman's voice sounded very surprised. He is actually still alive? I thought he had died a long time ago, but he is still alive? And he seems to be living well. The bounty of 390 million berry is really a scary amount. As a pirate who offered a bounty for the first time, this guy is really not easy. Is it evil Chef Dino? A low male voice interrupted. Oh, father? Are you there? The woman was a little surprised. I didn't expect that the brat with snot and tears on his face had become a great pirate. The man's voice was uncertain. Maybe he still wants to take revenge on us. Ha 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 ha. The young man laughed. If I were him, I would give up such a stupid idea. Isn't it good to sail properly? Why must I come here to die? But... The woman waved the wanted poster in her hand, the captain he followed seems to be a very amazing guy. Fire Dragon Vlad, it's really amazing to have such a huge amount of money for the first time. The man said in a low voice, I hope he doesn't come to be our enemy, otherwise. Chapter 90, The Name of Fire Dragon Resounds Through the Sea, 3. Sir Tesoro. Bakara stood respectfully behind Tesoro. She looked at the delighted expression on his face. She was a little puzzled. Tesoro had always kept his emotions hidden. It was rare to see such a happy expression on his face. Bakara. Tesoro gently picked up a book and pressed down on the wanted poster. He turned around and smiled. What do you think of Vlad? Vlad. Bakara was a little confused. Why did he suddenly mention this person? She did not have a good impression of Vlad. She had not forgotten the fire raging in Grand Tesoro that night. The destruction of the man on this ship was still vivid in her mind. Although she did not know what kind of shady deal he had with Tesoro, this could not reverse his bad impression of Vlad. He must be very powerful. In terms of strength, he is indeed a very powerful fellow. Although I have not seen it before, there is no doubt that Vlad is indeed a very powerful fellow. It's rare to see a man who can fight to that extent with Lord Tesoro. Bakara had a feeling of lingering fear. The powerlessness she felt when facing that man that night once again emerged in her heart. He really was a very strong man. Yes, in terms of strength alone, Vlad is already amazing enough. Tesoro walked to the huge floor-to-ceiling window and looked at the bustling lights in the distance. He sighed, he really is a very strong guy, Vlad. Bakara didn't say anything. He really is a very powerful guy, not just in terms of strength. Tesoro smiled. He really thought that Vlad was a very amazing guy, not just in the present, but in the future. Right now was just a small beginning, and what was truly amazing was waiting for the future. It's true, Vlad. You're making me believe in you step by step. Don't make me wait too long, Vlad. I can't wait any longer. I can't wait to see the future you're describing come true. How long do you want me to wait? You brat. The Fire Dragon Vlad. Is it the fire dragon fruit of the Zoan type? Boss, it's a great fruit. The big and rough man held a wanted poster in his hand that was extremely narrow for his hand and said excitedly. Mythical beast? It's really rare. The man was as tall as a small mountain, his body was full of big muscle lumps. Kaido poured wine into his mouth and said, this kid really got great power. Ha 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 ha. Kaido suddenly laughed, what a pity, ha ha ha, why? Why is such a great fruit not here with me? Originally, I wanted to build an army of animals. Isn't it a pity that I don't have this fruit ability? Ha 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 ha. What a pity. The vigorous laughter and slightly depressed words were completely different. It seemed to be an extremely pleasant thing. Boss, don't worry, I will go and catch this kid immediately. The tall man patted his chest and said. Bang. It was unknown when the giant mace appeared in Kaido's hand but it directly knocked away the man who stood up and promised to catch Vlad. Boom. It was like a howitzer was fired. The man who was sent flying directly smashed into a mountain in the distance. There was a constant rumble and the mountain actually collapsed. The beast Kaido was worthy of his immortal body and terrifying wrist strength. Bastard, what nonsense are you saying? Kaido roared, this kid, this fire dragon kid, is my prey. Lord Kin. The pirates screamed in fear as they ran to the collapsed hill. Crash! The tall man scratched his head and came out of the ruins. His head was slightly bleeding, but his expression was still doubtful. Did I get hit just now? The man said. It's all right. The subordinate screamed in unison. Oh, so he was really beaten. 
The man scratched his head and confirmed. Really amazing. A man with white hair was sitting in front of the bar with a glass of wine in his hand. He looked a little surprised. In front of him, there were several bounties. On the top one, the man with the arrogant smile looked familiar. Have you made a name for yourself in the sea so quickly? Rayleigh poured a mouthful of wine into his mouth and said with a smile, Young people nowadays are really scary. It makes us old seniors feel ashamed. Fire Dragon Vlad Shucky held a cigarette in her mouth and casually picked up Vlad's bounty. Her tone was a little surprised, Is this really the first bounty? What did this kid do? Rayleigh, I kind of understand why you think so highly of this little brother. Ha 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 ha. Rayleigh laughed. No, Shucky, you are wrong. I am not optimistic about this little guy. I am optimistic about this era. Shucky looked at the man with a red face and did not speak. Ha 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 ha, Shucky, I am now really sure that the era that Roger was looking forward to is coming. The man who was known as the Dark King said, the times have changed. Wah ha ha ha, that's great. Vlad looked at the bounty and laughed, that's great. This is the famous sea. Captain, this is, is this a wanted poster? The chef walked out of the cabin with a stack of desserts and saw the wanted poster in Vlad's hand. That's right, a wanted poster. Vlad took out a piece and handed it to the chef. Come and take a look. You are also wanted. Is that so? The chef didn't mind. As a pirate, it was unavoidable for him to make a name for himself. Most of the time, for pirates, the bounty was the capital for them to brag about. Oh, the bounty is really amazing. The chef saw the bounty under his photo and was a little shocked. How is it? How do you feel? Chef? Now you are also a pirate with a bounty of 399 million berry. Vlad laughed. What? Chef's bounty is 399 million? Why do I only have 180 million bailey? The maid heard Vlad's words and came over with a very unhappy expression on her face. Ha ha ha. Vlad laughed, maid. This means that you are not strong enough. The marines think that your threat is not enough. Damn it. The maid looked at the chef with resentment. For her, only half of the reward was a shameful thing. By the way, captain, since we have been rewarded, you must be the same, right? The chef handed the dessert to the impatient Vlad and asked. Vlad, who was busy sending dessert to his mouth, casually handed over a piece of paper and did not pay much attention to it. Well, fire dragon Vlad. The chef got Vlad's arrest warrant, and his tone gradually became higher, Ferdinand Vlad, life or death, a reward is offered, and the reward is 750 million berry. Chapter 91, Water 7 City The surface of the sea was cloudy. Today was a strange weather that was common in the Grand Line. Vlad was already used to it, and he did not care about the weather changes. Anyway, with him on the ship, no matter how bad the weather was, it could not cause any waves so he ignored it. Hello, Captain? There's something in the sea. The maid who was leaning against the window of the cabin suddenly screamed, her expression very interested. What? Vlad, who was almost fully recovered, walked to the window with a small plate of cake. When he looked out, his superhuman eyesight instantly allowed him to see the strange things in the sea that the maid mentioned. Accompanied by the turbulent waves that continue to exist, strange objects that spread from far away, with no knowledge where they will continue. It was like two straps floating on the surface of the sea. If one did not look carefully, they would not be able to see it at all. The maid had indeed never seen such a thing before, so she naturally did not know what it was. Vlad was different. Although he had never seen it before, Vlad knew what it was. Yes, of course, he was very clear. Or it could be said that even a modern person who had never seen one piece could recognize what that thing was. The characteristics were really obvious. Although the position of the appearance was a bit strange, there was no doubt that the two things that spread side by side were obviously rails. Oh? That thing. Vlad smiled. It seems that we are very close to the Water 7 capital. Water 7 capital. The maid suddenly turned her head and stared at Vlad with big eyes, is this thing from the capital of Water 7? Oh? So this is the railway of the sea train. The chef who also walked to the window side, although I already knew that such a thing existed, this is the first time I have seen it with my own eyes. Ocean train. The maid was a little confused again. She had never heard of this thing before. Oh? Maid, don't you know? 
Vlad laughed. You are so ignorant. As the captain, I have to criticize you. As the future Pirate King crew, if you want to be so arrogant, at least don't be so embarrassing. I will take you out of the crew in the future. I have a face to uphold. Do I need you to care about my business? The maid glared at Vlad and said in a very bad tone. She had a cigarette in her mouth and looked like a female hooligan. Phew! The whistle that broke through the sky came from the distant sea, and with a rumbling sound, it got closer and closer. Oh! Is it coming? Vlad smiled. Maid, aren't you curious about what a sea train is? Isn't it here? This is a specialty of Seven Water City. It's a very interesting thing. Oh? Is that so? The maid moved her face to the window, looking very curious. She had never heard of this thing. Vlad said it in a very awesome way, but he didn't know what it really looked like. In the wind and rain, a light gradually approached from the distance. As the light approached, the rumbling sound became more and more intense. A small black line gradually approached, getting closer and closer. The speed was extremely fast. The speed of the boat that Vlad and the others were on was completely incomparable to that thing. Soon, that thing had already revealed its true appearance in front of them. What is that thing? Baby Five exclaimed in shock. The gradually approaching behemoth had an unparalleled aura. It was truly an amazing creation made by the gods. The maid was extremely surprised. Vlad was much better. However, it was just a locomotive dragging a few carriages. It was not a big deal. In the previous world, such things were really rare. Even this train was not a shocking thing in this world. Vlad deeply understood this point. After all, a robot that could produce super-powerful abilities which could create a warship that could sink the island was produced 800 years ago. You said that its technology level was not good? It was simply a joke. The only thing that made Vlad extremely curious was how the huge locomotive made of steel ran on the sea. It was very strange, okay? Or was there some mystery on the railway that could withstand such a heavy sea train? It was really strange. Ah! Frog! Frog is swimming freely. Why does the frog use freedom to swim? The maid suddenly shouted. Toad! Vlad looked out of the window. It was indeed a frog. It was a huge frog with a red cloth under its crotch. It looked like a pouncing player. Just like what the maid had said, although it was a frog, it was swimming freely. There was no one else. The huge frog jumped up and stood directly on the tracks. It looked like it wanted to face the sea train head on. That's it. Vlad understood the identity of the frog. Its name was Yakazuna. It was Tom's pet was a frog that had been challenging the sea train. Can't you forget Tom and Flam? What a loyal frog! Vlad crossed his arms over his chest and sighed with laughter. Bang! There was a loud noise. Ah, it was knocked flying. It was sent flying without any resistance. The maid's tone was calm. Puh ha 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 ha! Vlad laughed as he watched the frog cross a parabola in the sky and land on the surface of the sea. I remember it very clearly. I still remember very clearly about Tom and Flam. It's actually fine. The maid looked at the frog from afar, turned over, and swam away like a normal person, and complained loudly, Is this normal? It really is a frog full of flaws. Ha 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 ha. Vlad laughed out loud. Maid, don't underestimate him. Don't underestimate this frog. Even though he is just a frog, there is no doubt that he is a real man. Never doubt a man's determination. What kind of determination is that? Can determination be used as power? The maid did not care about Vlad's theory. Vlad smiled and did not speak. There was no doubt that faith was a very powerful force. Well, since the sea train has appeared, it means that the seven water capital is very close, both of you. Vlad smiled. The boring voyaging life is coming to an end. I can finally have a good rest. What kind of place is the seven water capital? The maid asked curiously. What kind of place? Vlad was stunned. He really couldn't tell what kind of place it was. After all, he had only read the comic once in his previous life. He had already forgotten most of the important plots long ago. In this life, he had never specially learned about it. Naturally, he didn't know much about Seven Water City. Water City. The chef smiled. A water city famous in the sea, a world-famous shipbuilding city. It is a very beautiful place. Hmm? Chef. Have you been to the Seven Water Capital? 
the maid was a little curious. No, I know a little. The chef replied with a smile. Then you know quite a bit. The maid curled her lips. This chef seemed to know a bit about everything. He was obviously not an ordinary person. Soon, an island appeared in front of this small boat. After sailing for more than a month, the world-famous water city, the capital of Seven Water finally arrived. Chapter 92, Landing This was really a very eye-catching island. From far away, one could see its high spire. It was a huge fountain. A huge amount of water gushed out from it and flowed through the complex water channels all over the Seven Water capital. The main transportation for people living here was to rely on these water channels. They would raise a creature called the bullfish as a means of transportation and run through the water channels in the water capital. Wow, what a beautiful city! The maid exclaimed. In fact, it was rare for people who came to this island for the first time to not be amazed by its beauty. Baby Five was naturally no exception. Is this seven water capital? The chef's expression was filled with admiration. Although I've read it many times in the book, this is the first time I've truly seen it in front of me. It really is a great city. Yes, it is indeed a great city. Vlad knew that this city had existed for far longer than the imagination of ordinary people. As early as 800 years ago, this place had already become a world-famous shipbuilding holy land. This was indeed a long history. What was even more interesting was that 800 years ago, a ship was created here by the shipbuilders at that time. It was indeed not a simple ship. Its prestige would make people who knew about it feel horrified even now. The name of the ship was no longer clear, but people who knew later called it Hades. It was one of the three legendary ancient weapons, a terrifying warship that could sink an island with one shot. This was really a very interesting thing. The boatmen who lived here all loved peace. Whether it was the navy or the pirates, whether it was nobles or civilians, if they needed a ship, they would help. But it was this kind of place that made the legendary super evil warship. Was it a kind of irony? Captain, are we going to drive directly in? The chef asked. Their boat was gradually approaching the seven water capital. It was time to consider where to stop the ship. Drive in? How is that possible? Vlad smiled. Chef, don't forget. Although we only have three people, each one of us is a wanted criminal with a shocking bounty. If our flag is seen by others, it will be difficult. Then what should we do? The chef had a headache. Indeed, although the Seven Waters capital did not care whether you were a pirate or not, the bounty of the three of them in this paradise was a little too scary, especially the captain. The bounty of more than 700 million was not a small number even in the New World. Once recognized, it would probably alarm the Navy soon. Let's circle the ship to the back of the island. I remember there is a bay there. Let's stop there. Vlad still remembered that the Straw Hat group was parked there. It was a secluded good place. Okay. The chef had no objection to his captain's idea. He had never been to the Seven Water Capital, so he naturally did not know the situation here. Although he did not know why the captain clearly did not understand the Seven Water Capital, he was very familiar with some small details. Who? Vlad stretched his body, and all the bones in his body made a crack sound. I feel like I have not been down to earth for a long time. It's really a long lost feeling. It's really uncomfortable to keep floating on the sea. Vlad stood on the bare rock, unable to hide the excitement on his face. It had indeed been a long time since he had been on the island. He had almost forgotten what it felt like to step on the soil and rock. Captain, what should we do next? The chef asked softly. Next? Let's go find a hotel first. Have a good rest. We will find someone to build a ship tomorrow. Vlad looked at the majestic city not far away. He opened his mouth and said, as for the rest of the time, it's up to you. You can go sightseeing or buy anything. Really? The maid was the first to react. For girls, shopping and sightseeing were always irresistible temptations. Of course it's true. Vlad smiled. I also have something I want to do. It's very important. Let's take a break today. If you have anything you want to do, you can do it. Chef, you are the same. Well, I also heard that there is a very delicious seasoning in the Seven Water Capital. I wonder if it is true. The chef said. Of course it is true. Vlad did not say this. It was better to let the chef find it himself. Finding it was a pleasure. Then, let's go find a hotel first, and then we can move freely. 
Vlad raised a finger, remember, there is only one thing you must remember, friends. Understood. The chef nodded his head in understanding. He already understood the thoughts of Vlad. What do you understand? Why don't I understand? The mate said with dissatisfaction. Since you don't understand, then remember it well. Miss Maid, there is only one thing I want you to remember. Don't expose your identity. Vlad said seriously, I think you are also very clear about your identity now, right? Understood. The maid nodded. She was a woman with a bounty of nearly 200 million on her back. Don't mind it. This island has a guy hidden in the government. Vlad solemnly warned, don't let your guard down. Someone from the government. The chef was shocked. CP. That's right. Vlad said softly, these guys are hiding on this island. So, don't expose your identity. If they discover your tracks, I'm afraid that the general will come soon. If you are exposed, please remember. Vlad's mouth split open, and his tone was a little low. Get rid of all the witnesses. The chef could not help but shiver. Ha 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 ha. Vlad laughed out loud. I'm just joking, I'm just joking. As long as you pay attention, there won't be any problems. I know very well where those CP fellows are. If you don't know how to joke, then don't say it, okay? The mate's reaction was especially intense. Ha 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 ha. Let's go, the small ones, fire dragon pirates, have landed in Seven Water City. Captain, what about this ship? The chef asked. Since they had already decided to look for a new ship, there was no point in keeping this ship. How should we deal with it? There is nothing important on it, right? Vlad turned around and asked. The chef pointed at the huge package beside him and shook his head. The important things have all been moved down. Only some clothes and food are left on it. That's good. Vlad flicked his finger, and a white gold flame shot out, instantly hitting the small ship. The pirate ship carrying Vlad and the others from the Sabayati archipelago to the Seven Water Capital quickly disappeared into the flames. All right, little ones, the adventure of the Seven Water Capital has begun. Chapter 93, Frankie 1 The night had gradually enveloped this beautiful city. The lights of thousands of houses illuminated the night sky. Vlad walked through the streets in a black cloak. The hood on his head tightly wrapped around his head. No one could see his appearance. Vlad naturally did not come out to digest the food in the middle of the night. He naturally had his own purpose. He never did anything unnecessary. Wasting his strength was really a very troublesome thing. The Frankie family could be said to be a well-known organization in the Seven Water Capital. Or should it be said that it should be a notorious organization? This family was a famous rogue family in the Seven Water Capital. It could be said to be stinky in the local area. The Frankie family was a famous ship dissolution merchant in the local area. Their secondary profession was also a pirate hunter. According to reason, they hunted pirates while doing normal business. It was also the security force of the water capital. However, the world was often not so good. Frankie's family was a gathering organization of ruffians and hooligans. Violence was common. There was even the act of kidnapping pirates to extort ransom. It really made people feel disgusted with them. His leader was called Frankie. Cyborg Frankie was a pervert who made people. His perverted reputation spread throughout the city like water in the capital of water. In this city, there was no one who didn't know Frankie. Of course, Vlad knew Frankie and was very familiar with him. Although he hadn't seen him before, it didn't stop him from being familiar with this guy. There was no way. This person would join the Straw Hat Pirates in the future. If there was no Vlad, he would be the crew of the future Pirate King and become a member of the legend. Such a future was beyond anyone's imagination. Vlad came to find Frankie this time. Although his reputation was not very good, this guy was undoubtedly the best shipbuilder on this island. Only the ship born in his hands was what Vlad wanted, and it could satisfy Vlad. However, building a ship was not the purpose of Vlad's visit to Frankie. He had another, more important goal. Frankie's original name was Cuddy Flam, the disciple of the legendary master of ships, Tom. There was no doubt that this guy was a genius in shipbuilding and weapon making. He had the ability to make cannons and weapons at such a young age. However, this was not the reason that Vlad came to find him. There was only one purpose for Vlad to come to find Frankie in the middle of the night, and that was the blueprint that Frankie held. There was no doubt that it was the most precious thing in the water capital. 
because this blueprint was nothing else. It was the legendary super evil warship, the blueprint of Pluton. Vlad was very interested in one of the three ancient weapons that could sink an island in one blow. Vlad was now in the stage of accumulating strength. He was unwilling to miss any power that he could use, not to mention an amazing existence like Pluton. He really wanted it. He really did not want to miss this kind of power. Although he did not dare to make it in a short time with the blueprint, and it was estimated that it would be difficult to make it. However, since he had already come to Seven Water City, wouldn't it be a waste not to get this treasure close to him? Moreover, the weapon fruit of the maid seemed to be very compatible with this blueprint. It was really interesting that he might be able to create a humanoid Dark King. Think about it, think about it, everyone. The female servant of the humanoid Dark King could easily shoot an island. Who in this sea could stop the journey of the Great Vlad? Just thinking about it would make him feel very refreshed. Wah ha 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 ha. Vlad's face, hidden under his hood, grinned. Vlad was laughing on the empty street. The Frankie family in the dark had already appeared in front of Vlad. There was no such thing as a heavily guarded statement. After all, they were still open for business. In addition, the family was a notorious gangster group. Those who knew about it would naturally not come to find trouble. Those who did not know would naturally not know of such a place. Therefore, when Vlad arrived, the area was silent. The door of the Frankie family was tightly closed. Now, it was already past the opening time. There were already fewer guests now. As for the pedestrians, there were even less. The notorious recognition here was not a joke. How could anyone come to this place late at night? Well, Vlad saw that the Kanbunsho Kohaki was fully opened, and the situation in the house began to gather in his mind, is it a banquet? Vlad sighed, that's great. It's good to have more people. We can hold a banquet. There are only three of us, so we can only play fight the landlord. There has to be someone who always pays attention to the direction of the ship. I'm so envious. Perfect. In the room, wearing swimming trunks, the blue hair on his head was combed into the shape of a flying headman shouting slogans, making a posture that no ordinary person could do. Brother Frankie. The two women stood in front of Frankie like the most fanatical star chasers. Their eyes were full of worship, and their hair was really amazing. The two squares made people wonder if they would be killed by the wind when the wind blew. It could only be said that humans were divided into groups by birds. The abnormal teammates were not people who liked to follow the rules. Today, I am also, super. Super. Frankie's two arms were together, and the five-pointed stars on his two arms merged together to form a new five-pointed star. This kind of action was not something a normal person could do. Super. The two women maintained the same height as their big brother and their movements were also inhuman. Ha 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 ha. Hey, hurry up and drink. I took a fancy to that piece of meat. He he, whoever gets it first will get it. The happy banquet was going on, and the atmosphere was constantly rising, forming a sharp contrast with Vlad who was alone outside the door. Hey. Pfft. A man near the door suddenly opened his eyes and foamed at the mouth. The wine glass in his hand could no longer be held. He fell to the ground and shattered into pieces. Then, the man also lost consciousness and fell to the ground with a thud. Hey, how? The man next to him saw his partner suddenly fall down and wanted to ask about it. However, suddenly, a terrifying aura came from nowhere and shrouded him instantly. This man could not resist at all. He followed in the footsteps of his companion and fell to the ground instantly. Ugh. Plop. Pfft. Crash. All of a sudden, the room was in a mess. Everyone fell to the ground one by one, as if they had been poisoned. The cups in their hands, plates and bowls all fell to the ground. There was a clatter. Hey, what's wrong? Frankie suddenly came to his senses. His little brothers instantly fell down, and the sudden situation made his brain, which was a little affected by alcohol, come back to life. Frankie. Big. Brother. The two square sisters were no exception. They instantly lost consciousness and fell to the ground. Then, finally, Frankie also finally felt the situation that his little brothers felt. A terrifying aura instantly descended, as if a terrifying magical beast was staring at him. Bang! Frankie instantly fell to his knees, unable to move, his head hanging down to the bottom. Although he was still conscious, he could not move no matter what. No cells in his body were trembling. All of them were afraid, 
all of them screaming. Tap. 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 The sound of footsteps approached from afar, and the last thing Frankie saw was a pair of feet coming out of his sight. Hmm? Are you still conscious? Then, there was a low and hoarse voice. Bang. Frankie finally lost consciousness after the heavy blow to his neck. Chapter 94, Blueprint in Hand Vlad did not want to expose his identity. This could be seen from the fact that he was wrapped in a cloak. As mentioned earlier, it was time for Vlad to accumulate his strength. He did not want to walk up to the front desk like this. It was not worth it to expose himself now. Before he had enough strength, he would not make a move. Therefore, he did not intend to expose his appearance in front of the Frankie family. If he wanted to kill these guys, it would be very simple. With a casual fire attack, he would burn all the trash that were not done in Hacky. There would be no omissions. However, he was not here to kill people. Vlad did not like to kill people. It was not pleasant to deprive others of their lives. If not for necessary, he would not kill them. Not to mention that the Frankie family had no enmity with him. He was not the male protagonist of a fantasy novel. He was very skillful in killing people and stealing their treasures. So what if he got the blueprint without revealing his face? This was what Vlad considered. Fortunately, he had a very powerful skill. Although it was useless for the strong at present, it was still useful to clear out the miscellaneous troops. The ability of Dragon was really useful. When they fought against the guerrillas, they instantly wiped out thousands of soldiers of the marine. They created conditions for the three people of the Fire Dragon Pirates to fight against the three people of Z. It was also a very powerful battle record. So, this ability came in handy now. The people in the house were all weak. Only Frankie could barely look at them. The rest were not as good as the elites of the Marines on Z ship. Vlad's spirit was instantly stimulated. Like a violent wind, he went into the room. His Kanbuncho Kohaki was constantly monitoring the situation in the room. The people in the room were like wheat harvested by a harvester. They fell down one by one. There was no one who could resist. When the people in the room were almost finished, Vlad kicked the door open and stepped in. Walking through the unconscious people, Vlad walked to the front of Frankie. He didn't expect that this man had not lost consciousness. Vlad was a little surprised. He really didn't expect this guy to be able to resist his dragon power. You should know that Frankie's strength was really not good. He was the kind of person who was stingy. However, he was actually able to withstand Vlad's dragon might. It should be said that he was worthy of being a man who could get on a straw hat boat. His willpower was not to be underestimated. Vlad sighed and then knocked Frankie unconscious. Looking at the unconscious Frankie, Vlad revealed a very harmonious smile. If I remember correctly, the blueprint should be in Frankie's body, right? Vlad looked at Frankie's bare body and revealed a look of disgust. He did not want to touch it. Although he knew that the blueprint was in Frankie's body, he did not want to touch it no matter what. This person was indeed a pervert. Vlad was a straight man. He did not want to have any intimate contact with other men who were of the same sex as him. He did not even want to touch them. This was Vlad's insistence. Well, how about this? Vlad stretched out his right hand and raised his index finger. Instantly, a fiery red dragon scale attached to it. A white gold flame appeared at his fingertips. The white gold flame shot out like a laser beam and directly hit Frankie's stomach. Then, it disappeared in an instant. If this continued, Frankie would be pierced. Then, the white gold flame began to burn on Frankie's body. Vlad could control the range. He activated the Kanbuncho Kohaki at full power. Once the flame spread to other places, it would immediately extinguish. He kept the flame in the area of Frankie's stomach. Frankie was a cyborg. His stomach was completely made of steel. Even if he used fire, it would not be a problem. The temperature of the platinum flame was really not covered. A hole was quickly opened in Frankie's stomach. Vlad raised his eyebrows and instantly extinguished the flame. The hot molten iron flowed into Frankie's stomach. Jesus. Oh no. Only then did Vlad feel that something was wrong. Damn it, he had forgotten that there would be molten iron when the steel melted. How could there be anything left of the blueprint when it came to this? Vlad did not care about anything anymore. He grabbed Frankie and flipped him over. The hot iron water with a pungent smell flowed down and dripped on the floor, instantly burning the wooden floor. Vlad did not care. His attention was all on the blueprint that fell out of Frankie's stomach. 
Vlad threw Frankie to the side and no longer had any interest in this pervert. Hey, 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 did you get it so easily? Vlad suddenly had an unreal feeling in his heart. How could he succeed so easily? This was not a simple thing. This was the blueprint of the legendary super evil warship, Pluton. This was something that the world government had been looking for. Wahahahaha. Vlad looked at the blueprint like a lunatic. He stood in the middle of a group of unconscious people and laughed. This scene looked really horrifying. Although he could not understand the complex and precise blueprint at all, it did not affect his happy mood. This was no wonder. Vlad was not a person who was willing to be lonely. He wanted to create a name in the sea. He wanted to become the Pirate King. The existence of Hades greatly enhanced the power in Vlad's hands. This was really good news. Well, in order to express my gratitude, I will save your lives. Vlad said as he looked at the flames that were gradually spreading. Phew. Vlad opened his mouth wide, and a gust of wind blew in the room. The flames that began to spread on the floor were like swallows returning to the forest, turning into a vortex of flames that surged into Vlad's mouth. Vlad opened his mouth wide and sucked the flames into his mouth like he was drinking a drink. Burp. Vlad burped. The taste was not bad. Although it was far inferior to the dessert made by the chef, it was still barely enough to be a night additional meal. All right. Vlad nodded in satisfaction. The spreading flames in the room had already been devoured by him. Only the dark floor could barely be seen that there had been flames spreading before. Now we're even, right? I took your blueprint, but helped you extinguish the fire. It can be said that I saved your lives, right? This can be considered even, right? Since we're even, then there's no problem. Vlad put the blueprint in his arms and walked to the door. No need to send me off, friends. Lastly. Vlad finally turned his head to look at Frankie who was lying on the ground. He smiled and said, Good dream. Chapter 95, Shameless. When Vlad returned to the inn where the three of them were staying, it was almost dawn. His two subordinates were already getting impatient from waiting in the room. In the middle of the night, the captain left the room with a mysterious expression on his face. Then, he never returned. Even though he was very assured about his captain's combat strength, the two of them could not help but worry that Vlad might have encountered something. Wahahahaha. Along with this voice, Vlad pushed open the window of the room. He had an extremely happy expression on his face. Then, he jumped in from the outside. He was surprised to see the two guys still in his room. You guys are still here. Vlad asked in surprise, don't you guys need to sleep? Captain, what are you talking about? The chef said helplessly, you went out without a word, and you never came back. How can we sleep peacefully? Chef is right, Captain. The maid was also very dissatisfied. Can you be more careful? Can you make us less worried? We are also helpless that you keep going on your own way. Hey. Vlad frowned and looked at the maid with a strange look. Well, you have grown bolder recently. Miss Maid, you actually dare to talk to me in a bad way. The maid's body obviously shrank. It was obvious that the psychological shadow that Vlad had left her before had not dissipated, but this maid mustered the courage to face the brutal Vlad. But Captain, I'm not wrong. The maid's expression was particularly serious. We are partners, aren't we? Eh. Vlad was stunned. Since we are companions. The maid's tone gradually became steady, and her words gradually became firm. Please don't make us worry. We are partners sailing on the same ship. In the vast sea, only we can rely on each other. So, Captain. We rely on you, so occasionally, please rely on us. Although our strength is far from enough, Captain. The maid, who was previously unruly and full of profanities, now had a serious expression on her face. Please bring us along if you need anything. We don't want to stay behind you all the time. That's right, what Miss Maid said was what I wanted to say. The chef had a smile on his face and looked at Vlad with sincerity. Although I am somewhat dissatisfied with Miss Maid comparing me to her, it is obvious that I am stronger than her in both function and strength on the ship. But, without a doubt, Captain, we are also worthy to rely on. Hey! Bastard, what did you say? Who are you saying is inferior to you? The maid was very dissatisfied with the chef's rude remarks. Vlad was a little stunned, his eyes sweeping back and forth between his two companions. Pfft! Wahahahaha! 
Vlad laughed so hard that tears started to fall from his eyes. Hey, Captain, you don't think it's that funny, do you? The maid looked at Vlad, who was laughing so exaggeratedly, and asked unhappily. No, I am laughing at myself. Vlad laughed so hard that he was out of breath. I am really a fool. I obviously have such a wonderful partner, but I still feel that I don't have much. Pfft. Wahahahaha. No, this is too funny. The so-called partner is me. I believe that you can do the rest, just like how you believe that I can do the same. I will not hesitate to rely on you, just like how you can rely on me without hesitation. The so-called partner is to believe. I am willing to give my back to you, just like how you will not deny that I can protect your back. Elder Vlad had long understood this principle. However, he still could not help but be a little careless. Because his two companions were not strong enough and could not help him, he inevitably did not believe in his companions. Now that he thought about it, wasn't that stupid? I'm sorry, wahahahaha. I'm really sorry. Vlad laughed and apologized, I was too arrogant before. Ha 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 ha, it's really funny to think about it. Ha 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 ha. The chef suddenly laughed as well. He looked very happy and did not look as calm as usual. Hey, is it that funny? The maid looked at the two men who were laughing and was a little confused. What was going on? What are you laughing about? Ha 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 ha, I don't know. Vlad hugged the maid and the chef. These two precious companions of his laughed out loud. I don't know either. I just feel that I should laugh at this time, right? Pfft. How silly. Captain, ha 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 ha. For the first time, the maid understood what these two men were thinking. That's right, there was no reason to laugh at this time. Wasn't it the happiest thing to be able to meet two companions who could entrust their lives to the sea? Look, this is the result of me going out tonight. Vlad casually threw the precious drawing on the table with a mysterious smile on his face. This is, what is it? The chef gently flipped open the blueprint, and the parameters were immediately revealed. They were all things that ordinary people could not understand at all. Oh, is it the blueprint of a ship? However, the chef was not an ordinary person. It could be said that he was too knowledgeable. Ho, oh, it's so complicated. Is there such a ship? I don't understand. The maid looked at the drawing and then shook her head to indicate that she couldn't do it. She couldn't understand how the chef could understand it at all. No way, right? Such firepower and such agility. The chef looked up in shock. Captain, what is this? As you can see, it's a blueprint for building a ship. Vlad replied with a smile. How could there be such a ship? The chef displayed an extremely excited expression. Although there are many professional areas that I can't understand, but, Captain, I have some understanding of manufacturing ships. Can such a ship really be made? Whether it is power or firepower, it is all incredible. Of course it can be made. Vlad replied, in fact, such a ship has already been made a long time ago. Could it be? The chef suddenly thought of something, and his face instantly changed. That's right, that ship was called by the world, Pluto. Vlad said, the legendary warship of extreme evil. Vlad came to the door of Frankie's family again. Unlike last night, Vlad was not alone now. There was also a maid behind him. The chef was busy going to the city to find the legendary seasoning, so he did not follow. Captain, are the guys here really good at ship construction? The maid was also wearing a cloak, and her tone was a little unhappy. Are we really not going to Galila? I heard that the shipbuilders there are great. What nonsense are you saying? Miss Maid. Vlad said, Galila has long been infiltrated by the CP flies. Aren't we walking into a trap? Since there are flies, why don't we just swat them to death? The maid had always been simple and violent. Ha 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 ha. Forget it. You just need to know that the best boatsman in the water capital is here. Vlad said as he stepped forward. He felt a wonderful sense of pleasure in his heart. He had just come here last night to knock over all the people here and snatch away the most precious treasure of others. Now, he had entrusted others to build ships. Thinking about this, he was really shameless. Pfft. I'm dying of laughter. Chapter 96, Shipbuilding Commission Captain? Did you go to the wrong place? The maid carried a huge package and asked curiously. After all, no matter how one looked at it, this place that did not do business in the middle of the day was very unreliable. 
It was very strange. Logically speaking, it should be the time for business. Even a half-evil, half-merchant family like Frankie should have gotten up to do business. If there was no business, they should go out and bully the city. However, it was very strange that the gate of Frankie's family was still closed, and they had no intention of opening the door to do business. Ayaya, it seems that what happened last night has a great impact on these guys. Vlad said to himself. Vlad is naturally very clear about the reason for this. No one has such a big heart that they were attacked last night, all the staff were overthrown by unknown AOE, and the next day they can continue to act as if nothing happened and open the door for business. There are no such big-hearted people in this sea, right? Probably not. Not to mention that the blueprint that Frankie looked at was even more important than his life was taken away by him. Vlad understood the course of Frankie's heart. After all, it was the relic of the legendary shipbuilder, Tom. For Frankie, it was undoubtedly more important than his own life. Understanding does not mean that Vlad is willing to go back without success. Isn't that too polite? Vlad is a pirate. The main family is not willing to meet and go back honestly. It is not what a qualified pirate should do. Therefore, in the face of the closed door of Frankie's family, Vlad chose a very pirate solution. Bang! The thick wooden door fell and made a loud sound, which instantly attracted the attention of the bright and ferocious guys in the house. Vlad took back his big foot and swaggered in. No one knew the expression on his face under the cloak. Behind him was the same cloaked servant girl. I'm sorry, I accidentally broke your door. I'm really sorry. Vlad's voice came from the cloak, but he had no intention of apologizing at all. His tone was very arrogant. Hey, are you here to pick a fight? A small fry stood up. He was not very capable, but his tone was very big. Do you know where this is? Hey, 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 where is Frankie? Vlad did not care about the little minion at all. He put his hands on the awning and looked around the house. However, he did not see Frankie. Is he not here? No, this is not good. I came to find him with great difficulty. How can he not be here? Vlad shook his head in distress. This was a little awkward. It was not easy to find someone, but he was not here. How ridiculous. Hey, you hiding your head and showing your tail. Did you hear me? The little minion who was ignored by Vlad felt very good and approached Vlad. The twisted expression on his face made Vlad feel a little disgusted. Sorry, please stay away from me. To be honest, I'm a little disgusted, said Vlad. What? The little minion was stunned at first, but then he was furious. You bastard. Bang. Vlad stretched out his big foot and kicked the little minion away. Hey, I already said to stay away from me. Why don't you listen? Are you looking for a beating? Frankie was in a very sad mood today. Last night, the banquet was going well, but the sudden attack broke the happy night. The group of them were completely unaware of the attack and were all beaten by the attacker with an unknown move. Even he himself was the same. He did not completely withstand the attack of the other party. Although he did not lose consciousness, he was not much worse. He was mercilessly knocked out without even seeing the face of the other party. Now that he thought about it, it was really a shameful thing. But now, Frankie did not care about this shameful thing at all, because there was something more terrible than losing face. When Frankie woke up this morning, he found that there was a hole in his stomach. This was not a big deal. For ordinary people, a hole in the stomach was basically a fatal injury, but for Frankie, this kind of change was just a harmless thing. What really shocked Frankie was that when he woke up, he found that the thing that he had been keeping in his body disappeared. It was nothing else. It was the relic of Mr. Tom, the thing that the world government had been looking for. He knew that the other party was coming for the blueprint of Pluton. He really wanted to go to Icebig and have a good discussion. In fact, he did go. There was no other way. It was such a big matter, and he was really a little confused. But in the end, he still came back. He knew that Icebig and the world government were very close to each other now. If he really went, he would probably be noticed by the government immediately. So he decided to go back, but he did not expect to see such a situation when he returned to his old nest. Aya, finally back? It really made me wait a lot, Mr. Frankie. Vlad, who was sitting on the ground, stood up excitedly when he saw Frankie's abnormal body coming out of the door. He had waited for a long time, and he was really impatient. Hey, bastard, who are you? 
what have you done to my dear little brothers? As soon as Frankie entered his nest, he noticed that something was wrong. The door fell directly to the ground. Two suspicious guys were sitting in the middle of the house, but his little brothers were cowering in the corner and did not dare to breathe. Me. Vlad introduced naturally, you don't need to know who I am. You only need to know that I am here to discuss a business deal with you. Business. Frankie's eyebrows instantly twisted. Brother Frankie, you are finally back. The little brothers ran to Frankie's back as if they saw their savior, and their eyes were still timid. These two guys are super strong, they said they came to you for a business deal. Hiding and showing the tail, pirates? You are. Frankie said. It doesn't matter. Vlad said, you can guess whatever you want, I am here this time mainly to ask you to help me build a ship. Build a ship. Ha 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 ha. Frankie laughed, you are looking for the wrong person, bastard, our Frankie family is an expert in ship dismantling, let's forget about building a ship. Stop lying. Vlad said, the disciple of Tom the Fishman, how can Cuddy Flam not know how to build a ship? Chapter 97, Compromise. Clack. Frankie raised his left hand, and his left hand instantly separated from his arm, revealing a black hole. Bastard, how do you know? It had been a long time since someone had mentioned the name of Cuddy Flam, and he had almost forgotten about it. Frankie had changed his name for a long time. It had been a long time since he saw that Mr. Tom was taken away by the government. Cuddy Flam, the name that carried his countless happiness and laughter, sadness and tears, had not been mentioned for a long time, but today, someone actually mentioned it. Frankie didn't have the slightest bit of nostalgia, only sweat began to pour down his back, and some just like the heart that was pulled by someone. This person, who was this person? How did this person know his identity? Who the hell are you? Bastard? Tell me your name. Frankie's tone was very excited. His identity was not a trivial matter. If the government people knew that he was still alive, it would be lively. Those hyenas had always been keen about the blueprint of Pluton. Even if the blueprint was no longer with him, would those hyenas believe it? Hey, 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 calm down, Mr. Frankie. Vlad said in a leisurely tone, as if what was aimed at him was not a powerful cannon, but a small water gun. Don't be excited, haven't we already said it? We are just here to invite you to build a ship for us. As a shipmaker, I think you often understand that a good ship is a very important thing for people who sail on the sea. Vlad seemed to be talking to friends, and his tone was very calm. You're right, right? Mr. Frankie, I think you understand this truth, right? Kid, don't think about getting away with it like this. Frankie was not swayed by Vlad's words at all. Although on the surface, this man was undoubtedly a pervert, he was not stupid after all. Who are you? Are you from the government? government. Wah ha 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 ha. Don't make me laugh, Mr. Frankie. If I were a member of the government, you would have already been on the train to the judicial island. Vlad said so. Tell me, who exactly are you? Frankie roared, his emotions fluctuated, and he could not calm down at all. Eh yeah yeah, I miscalculated. I thought that telling you your true identity would be more beneficial to our communication. Vlad patted his head and said with some regret. Indeed, if he did not act tough in the beginning, maybe the business would have been settled now. After all, Frankie really needed a sum of money to buy the Adam Precious Tree to build a ship. It had always been his dream to build a ship like this. There's no other way. It seems that we can only prove that we have the ability to easily send you to the sea train. Vlad turned his head helplessly and said softly, hurry up. Bang. The maid put the huge package on the ground and said in a very unhappy tone, I should have done it a long time ago. The short-tempered Miss Maid could no longer tolerate the greetings between Vlad and Frankie. For her, why did she have to delay things that could be solved with a fist? Wasn't this a waste of time? Brother Frankie, be careful, this woman is very powerful. Although the maid was also wearing a cloak, her sweet voice could not be hidden. Before Frankie came back, his subordinates were cleaned up by the maid. Presumably, they had left a shadow in their hearts. Hey. Pervert, are you really not willing to help us build the ship? The maid said. Pervert. Frankie's face became very strange and happy, are you praising me for being abnormal? Even if you praise me, I will not let you go. That's enough, how did I learn to talk too much? The maid's tone became cold, 
then don't blame me for being impolite. Chi. The maid's body suddenly swayed, and like a shadow, she instantly rushed towards Frankie. Bang. Since the other party had already made a move, Frankie did not have any need to hold back. The barrel in his left hand was instantly fired, and a powerful shell directly shot out, directly hitting Miss Maid. What's the use of this? The maid's tone was full of ridicule. The not-so-powerful Kanbuncho Kohaki was instantly activated, and the trajectory of the shell was immediately visible. The maid just slightly twisted her head, and the shell brushed past the maid's ear with the whistling sound of the wind. It did not affect her speed at all. What? Frankie's eyes suddenly widened. This was the first time he had encountered such a thing. His shell was easily avoided. However, at this time, he had no time to be surprised. The maid was close to him. Damn, strong iron fist. In an instant, a fist made of steel appeared under his right hand. Vlad did not dare to hesitate, and his iron fist smashed toward the enemy flying with the whistling wind. Naive. The maid jumped and easily dodged Frankie's attack. It had to be said that if the opponent's physical strength was not enough to crush him, the Kanbuncho Kohaki could really be described as cheating. Drink. The maid lightly shouted. Her right leg was like a steel whip, wrapped with invisible fluctuations. Without a doubt, it was an unfamiliar Busos Hoku Haki. Bang. The maid's whip leg directly smashed into Frankie's face. This twisted face instantly twisted, just like a cannon that was fired out of the barrel, it was blown away by the maid in an instant, directly crashing into the opposite house. Boom. At this time, the cannon launched by Frankie exploded behind. So weak. The maid sighed. Although the maid was very weak, it was still in the new world. In terms of paradise, the maid was undoubtedly worthy of her bounty. It was quite easy to beat someone like Frankie. Hey, hey, Miss Maid, isn't it a bit too rough? Vlad said helplessly. Really? It can't be? I don't think I did much. The maid looked very innocent. Forget it, forget it. Vlad picked up the package on the ground and walked towards Frankie, who was lying in the ruins. Looking at him walking over step by step, Frankie's little brothers, with a face of death, stood in front of Vlad, bastard, bastard, with us here, don't even think about harming a hair of Frankie. They were obviously afraid, but these guys could muster up the courage to stand in front of him, what a group of good little brothers, Vlad sighed. Just like a phantom, Frankie's little brothers did not react at all, and Vlad was already standing in front of Frankie. How is it? Do you believe that we are not government people now? Vlad said. Ah, it hurts. Bastard, you hit me too hard. Frankie was lying in the ruins with a bloody nose and a swollen face, cursing, I believe it, I believe it. He had no choice but to believe it. If these two guys were really from the government, just as he said, he should have already taken the sea train. All right, then I'll have to trouble you. Vlad put the package on the ground. Here is 500 million berry 100 million as your reward and compensation. The rest should be enough to build a good ship, right? I haven't. 500 million. Frankie didn't want to agree, but in an instant, he was like a cat whose tail had been stepped on. He instantly shot up, not like he was injured. He opened the package, and a large pile of berry instantly lit up his eyes. Hey, brother, are you serious? Frankie said. Yes. Vlad nodded. I believe you. Chapter 98, Gourmet Island. Woo. The tall man was crying continuously. Tears fell from his face as if they were worthless. He clearly had the image of a tough man, but at this moment, this man was crying like a little girl with the most fragile heart. How should he put it? It was really a little funny. Hey, brother Frankie, is it enough? Can you stop crying? The little brother next to him couldn't bear it anymore. His boss was really a little embarrassed now. Woo. That little brother, that little brother, he is a cool man. Woo, I am so touched. Frankie said while crying. I have decided, little ones, I will make the most perfect boat for him. Woo. Frankie shouted as he wiped his tears. He had been waiting for this day for a long time. He had always wanted to build a ship that was comparable to his master. He wanted to prove that his skills were not inferior to his master. This was also an unprecedented test. Frankie wanted his master to know that his skills were already very good. He could already inherit his master's will and become a very reliable boatsman. 
Recently, the wood of the precious tree atom in Black City of Seven Water City made Frankie very surprised. The ship his teacher built for the Pirate King was made from this legendary wood. It was a shocking ship that could even walk on flat ground in the horror sea of the New World. It could be said that it was the dream of every boatsman to build a ship with the precious tree atom. Frankie was no exception. However, the only regret was that the price of the treasure tree atom was not cheap. It was far from what Frankie could afford. He could only look at the sea and sigh. If there was no Vlad, then two years later, after the group of straw hats landed, Frankie would have enough money to buy the wood of the atom treasure tree. But now it was different. The 500 million berry that Vlad gave was enough for Frankie to spend. Now was a good time. If it could work, he could build a good ship that was not inferior to the gold Jackson. Moreover, that little brother was undoubtedly a sea hero who was worthy of such a ship. Since he was willing to believe in himself, then he must build a good ship that was worthy of him. Vlad felt a rare sense of guilt. It was different from watching animation in his previous life. Only after experiencing it personally could he feel Frankie's charm. He was undoubtedly a very bold man. There were not many people on the sea who could match him. Therefore, Vlad felt a little unhappy. The other party obviously admired him, but he secretly took away the treasure that the other party regarded as his life. He felt a little strange for some reason. What's wrong, Captain? You look a little absent-minded. The maid following behind Vlad asked. Nothing, I was just thinking about something boring. Vlad smiled. Forget it. He couldn't figure out what would happen in the future no matter how he thought about it. He just had to do what he had to do. Whether it was a friend or an enemy, he would wait until then. But, Captain, is there really no problem? The maid looked a little worried. There is a problem? What problem can there be? Vlad smiled. It doesn't matter. Frankie is not a man who likes to tell secrets. He won't talk about our identities. That's right. In order to completely dispel Frankie's suspicion, Vlad revealed his identity in front of Frankie. This time, Frankie did not doubt that Vlad would be a member of the government. I mean. Is it really okay for him to be responsible for building the ship for us? The maid said, didn't I teach him a lesson before? Ha 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 ha. Maid, you still don't understand. Vlad smiled. You still don't understand. Don't understand. The maid was confused. No one is willing to violate the agreement between men. Vlad's words were loud and clear. Hey. The maid's voice was full of disbelief. Captain, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Ha ha ha. Vlad laughed. Miss Maid, there is such a kind of person in the world. If you just look at him, you will think that this man is trustworthy. There is no doubt that Frankie is such a person. A man like him must keep his promise. Because there is no need for a reason. This man is a real tough man. So, I choose to believe him. And I believe even more that he will not betray my trust. The maid listened to Vlad's remarks and expressed that she did not understand your world very much. She always felt very confused. Ha 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 ha. Don't worry, there is no doubt that man, Frankie. Vlad held his companion and smiled. He is a trustworthy man. You don't have to insult his spirit with your imagination. You are the captain, of course you have the final say. The maid was speechless. Then what should we do next? Captain, didn't that pervert already say it? If he wants to build a boat by himself, it will take at least two months. Then what should we do next? Next. Vlad said. Of course it's impossible to stay in Seven Water Capital. This place is not very good. The hyenas in the CP are constantly paying attention to this island. Their desire for Pluton is far beyond our imagination. Security is a kind of attitude that can be said to be crazy. Then, what should we do? The maid repeated her question. What should we do? Training, of course. Vlad said matter-of-factly. Training. The maid was surprised. Of course, sister maid, your strength is the weakest in our pirate group. Don't you have any self-awareness? Don't you feel ashamed of a mere 180 million bounty? I feel ashamed to have such a weak subordinate like you. Then, Mr. Captain, where is the training you mentioned? The maid under the hood raised her eyebrows. She was obviously not happy. Of course, she would not be happy even if someone was criticized in front of her. I heard that there is a gourmet island near the Seven Water Capital. 
it can be reached directly by a sea train. Vlad's eyes were full of yearning. The cake masters there are famous even in the new world. Oh! Cake master! The maid suddenly raised her voice. Hey, Miss Maid, did you misunderstand something? Vlad argued, don't misunderstand. I have no interest in cakes at all. I just want to go there to inspect the local dessert industry. It's purely academic behavior. Don't think too much about it. I hope so. The maid snorted. Thus, the next day, three sneaky guys wrapped in cloaks boarded the sea train to the Island of Delicacies. Chapter 99, CP9 The capital of gourmet food, Puchi, the most famous gourmet island in the sea. Every year, countless tourists would come from every corner of the sea to this place. There are all the delicacies that all food lovers can think of here. There is no doubt that this place can satisfy all the desires of these old gluttons. For food lovers, it is a matter of course that this is a place like heaven. No matter when, the entire island exuded a rich fragrance. It was a mix of countless flavors of food. This was an incomparably moving fragrance. Just smelling this fragrance was enough to make one's appetite burst. Well. Vlad looked at the cake in front of him with a bit of hesitation. His eyebrows were furrowed tightly and his tongue was licking his lips from time to time. He looked very conflicted. How is it, Mr. Jack? How does it taste? A tall, fat man dressed in a white chef's uniform, and his body emitted a strong sweet fragrance that could not be erased. He stood in front of Vlad with a little pride and asked softly. Jack is naturally Vlad who got a pseudonym for himself. He also wears a mask covering the upper half of his face. With a face with a high bounty on his face and using his original name to mess around on this island mixed with dragons and snakes, he's afraid that a large number of warships will come around in a day. Fortunately, dragons and snakes are mixed on this island. As a deadly tourist attraction, there are navy pirates, businessmen and tourists coexisting on the gourmet island of Puchi, and even the giants of the underground world. World government officials are not uncommon. After all, people love food. Therefore, for some shady guys, Changing clothes was a very reliable method, so Vlad's bird appearance was not eye-catching. Well. In the face of the fat chef's question, Vlad was very confused and did not speak. What? Mr. Jack? Is it not delicious? The fat chef looked a little surprised, as if he was very unwilling to believe it. This man named Jack had come out of this island two months ago. Although he did not admit it, he was undoubtedly a crazy dessert enthusiast. Moreover, he was very generous. In order to be able to taste delicious dessert, he did not care at all. Almost all the dessert masters on the island had been patronized by him. Although he did not reject anyone, even the dessert that did not taste good would not be rejected. However, all the dessert masters who had received this man knew that this man was a rare dessert appraiser. Although he did not know how to cook, and although he had not received professional dessert appraisal training, just based on his almost instinctive taste, it was enough to think that these dessert masters had pointed out the right direction. It was enough to think that these dessert masters had decided who was the better. Yes, Vlad had been on this island for two months, but he had already become a famous dessert appraiser. It could only be said that it was the will of the heavens. The fat chef had already made an appointment with Vlad for two weeks. There was no other way. Recently, Vlad had been too busy. Many dessert masters on the island were looking for his help. They all hoped that under his suggestion, his cooking skills would rise to the next level. Due to excessive sugar intake, Vlad had grown close to 50 pounds in just two months. Fortunately, he was still in a high-speed developmental period. His height had also increased by quite a bit, reaching two meters. There did not seem to be anything out of place. Vlad was really busy, so he would not agree to anyone's invitation. Although it was the island of delicacies, the level of the dessert masters on the island was also uneven. Although they did not reject it, as a person, Vlad still instinctively yearned for better food. This fatty's level could be counted on one hand on this island. Otherwise, Vlad would not have agreed to his invitation. Now, it was different from when he tasted the works of all the dessert masters before. Now it was him who took the initiative. At. Vlad was a little hesitant, as if he did not know how to open his mouth. How should I put it? It's very delicious, there's no doubt about it. Vlad seemed to be very hesitant. It was very different from his usual style. It was obvious that he was very hesitant. Is it delicious? The fatty instantly had a happy expression on his face. 
since Mr. Jack had said so, it meant that his new work was very successful. Then, Mr. Jack, is there anything else that you are not satisfied with? The fat chef said. Of course there are some who are not satisfied. There is no doubt about it. Vlad's voice suddenly became serious, as if he had encountered a huge problem. Gulp. A pin drop could be heard in the dining room, and the fat chef's gulping voice was extremely obvious. Then, what is it that you are not satisfied with? The fat chef was a little nervous. Large beads of sweat rolled down his head. This was a new cake that he had spent a lot of effort to develop. If it was a small flaw, it could be improved, but if there was really a big flaw, then the efforts of the past few months would be in vain. Yes, I am very dissatisfied. Vlad said, what if I can't eat this kind of dessert in the future? Uh. The fat chef was dazed for a moment, then he was overjoyed. Ha 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 ha. It doesn't matter, Mr. Jack. I can give you the recipe. You just need to find a chef to make it. The fat chef was unexpectedly generous. Really? Vlad was shocked. This was the work of this chef. Could he really give it to him so easily? Ha 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 ha, it doesn't matter, Mr. Jack. A man who loves dessert like you can undoubtedly be entrusted. Every pore on the fat chef's face seemed to be smiling. Who? Who do you say loves dessert? Vlad was furious. I'm only here to do research, okay? Good, good. The fat chef understood this man very well and did not get along well with Vlad. He just smiled and said, Okay, Mr. Jack. I believe this recipe of mine will play a role in your research. The fat chef took out a piece of paper from his pocket. It must have been prepared for a long time. Please accept it. Well. All right. Vlad took the paper from the fat chef and carefully put it back into his pocket. The heavens had pity for him. Even when he had taken the blueprint of Hades, he had not been so careful. All right, I'll be leaving then. Vlad stood up and was about to leave. Please take care, Mr. Jack. The fat chef stood respectfully at the back and whispered goodbye. Vlad waved his hand and staggered towards the door. At this time, the door of the restaurant was pushed open. Oh? Someone familiar? Vlad thought so. The one who hit the head was a man with purple hair and a short beard. He wore a striped shirt and looked a little imposing. However, this person was not what Vlad cared about. What he really cared about was the few guys behind the man. Behind the man was a woman, a very beautiful woman, and also a very sexy woman. She was wearing a black OL uniform and a pair of net socks wrapped around her slender legs. Her golden hair was scattered behind her back, and she had a pair of glasses on her eyes. She had a very intellectual temperament. And behind them was a man, a man with a white pigeon on his shoulder, who was the most worthy person to pay attention to. His name is Rob Lucci, the strongest man in Judiciary Island for 800 years, the actual leader of CP9. Chapter 100, Sparring Behind Lucci was the square-shaped long-nosed Keiku. When he thought of the giraffe fruit that this buddy ate later, he wanted to laugh. It was really a very amusing fruit. After that, a few Vlad did not even remember their names. They did not seem to have any impression at all. Vlad's eyes were a little strange, he didn't expect that he deliberately went to this gourmet island to meet these CP9 punks, is it really fate? He really didn't expect that these guys from the Galley Law shipyard would come here for dinner today, which is really a very surprising thing. Vlad did not stop. These guys were all going to die. He did not even have the thought of fixing them. He strode out of the restaurant with his long legs. The door of the restaurant was not narrow and Vlad easily brushed past the people from the Galley Law shipyard and the three mice from the CP9 without any abnormalities. Hey, look, look, who is this? Isn't this Mr. Icebug who we haven't seen for a long time? Vlad could hear the fat chef's exaggerated voice from far away. Ha 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 ha, boss Harry, long time no see. The voice of the boss of the company sounded very enthusiastic. Well, wait, it seems that the cultivation of the maid has encountered a bottleneck, then, maybe. Wah ha 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 ha. Interesting, really interesting. Vlad seemed to have remembered something. He laughed and turned to walk toward the next restaurant. This afternoon, his task was still very heavy. If there was anything, he should wait until the final investigation ended. The sky gradually darkened, and the rocks were exposed in the wilderness. Ha. Huh. The woman's voice was a little low. Her right hand turned into a huge long saber, 
which was gradually wrapped in a layer of pitch black domineering aura. She directly slashed at a huge rock. P.U. There was a dull sound, and the huge rock instantly shattered. The smooth cut immediately appeared on the boulder. This woman had split this huge rock with a single strike. For ordinary people, this was an extremely shocking matter, but for the heroes of the sea, this was just an evaluation. Damn it! The maid's voice was somewhat unwilling. She was training her Busos Hoku. She had originally planned to harden her long blade and then chop it up. However, his Busos Hoku Haki was still a bit lacking. Although it was barely able to achieve Busos Hoku hardening, but before it could attack, the dark Busos Hoku suddenly dissipated. Although it still split the boulder, in fact, it was only pure brute force and sharp blade. Baby 5, there is no need to focus on developing Haki. The chef sitting on the side said. Although it was only butter, the hardness was not a joke. In order to carve this butter, the chef had even wrapped a faint hacky aura around the kitchen knife. Although it was not hardened, it already proved that this large piece of butter was extraordinary. The development of hacky is not so simple, especially the practice of Busos Hoku hacky. It requires constant fighting and constant confrontation of life and death. You can't train like this. The chef said. He was actually an experienced person. He had a lot of insight into the practice of hacky. Indeed, it was impossible to reach a very high level with only his own hard work. In the original world, even a genius like Luffy could only gradually master the Busos Hoku Haki in the Battle of the Baboon. The maid who was not talented wanted to strengthen her own Busos Hoku Haki by relying on her own hard work. I think what you should train most now is not your ability. The chef did not raise his head, his hands kept moving and said, Didn't the captain give you the blueprint? How about it? Can it change? The maid stood up straight and turned to look at the chef with a very unfriendly gaze. Naturally, her tone was not very polite. Hey, chef, the captain asked you to accompany me in my cultivation. He didn't ask you to carve flowers there. There's nothing I can do. If I don't move forward on the path of cooking, I can only move back. The chef was very serious. I don't want the captain to be dissatisfied with me. Tisk, bullshit. The maid said. Hey. Little ones, did you miss your captain? A tall figure walked over from afar with a bright smile on his face. Oh, look, look, who is this? Isn't this our great captain? What? Is this afternoon's dessert research over? The maid asked in a strange tone. Ha 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 ha. Vlad scratched his head awkwardly, speechless at the maid's squeezing. How is it? How's the training going? This was the first time Vlad had come to this island to ask about the maid's cultivation progress. It's almost time. I think Frankie should have already repaired the ship. Hardening, it's really hard. The maid sighed. I already said that it is very difficult to grasp without going through a high-intensity battle. The chef waved his hand, and the hard butter melted into his right hand like a swallow returning to its nest. Even the ingredients made by his own ability this man did not want to waste. He was really a thrifty man. Yes, chef is right. Vlad crossed his arms in front of his chest and said, If you want to build a car behind closed doors, you have to be strong. Maid, aren't you thinking too much? The maid did not speak. How is the fruit ability? Vlad said excitedly, Can that thing change? Yes, yes. The maid said softly, It's just that I can't keep up with my physical strength. Just transforming into an appearance is already exhausting my physical strength. Let alone using it for real combat, I can't even maintain my form. Wah ha 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 ha. Is that so? That's great. Vlad was not depressed in the slightest. It seems that our development plan is correct. It seems that we don't have to build a boat on purpose. Maid, you are completely enough. It's okay. In the face of Vlad's blunt praise, the maid was a little shy. Just in time. Let's call it hot iron and raise your hacky level to a higher level. Vlad said. What? The maid looked a little surprised. Captain, didn't you say that it would be difficult to master Haki without intense battles? Yes. Vlad nodded. That's why I specially went to find a few sparring partners for you after I finished my research today. Sparring partners? Oh? They're here. Vlad turned around and looked at the three figures that were rapidly approaching. You guy, who are you? The visitor asked, what do you know? His voice was as cold as ice. 